Commissioner Eggers, we're ready when you are. Okay, thank you. And I just wanted to take an opportunity to uh, welcome everybody to the meeting today. And before we get started, I, I thought we would uh, take just a moment of silence uh, for several things. Uh, first and foremost, I guess, uh, for the victims of COVID and their families who are obviously continuing to struggle um, with that. And for individuals and in businesses that continue to suffer from financial, financial hardship. Um, Secondly, um, we pray for our country that uh, is going through some very difficult times right now as we continue to deal with um, uh, the death of George Floyd and his, and his family and what they're going through and the sadness that uh, has come upon their family, but also to, the, to our greater family, the, our country and the difficulties that we're going through. So just a moment of, of silence for that and also for the individuals and the police that have lost their lives this week and the businesses that have lost their way of, of, of uh, their, their bricks and mortar, if you will. So there's a lot of uh, things to be prayerful for and, and just take a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me there. Um, I hope my growling stomach, you didn't hear that. Um, but in any event, we're here today to, uh, to have our uh, uh, forward panelists, our second virtual meeting. Uh, so good afternoon and welcome to the June 10th virtual forward panelist board meeting, which is convening pursuant to executive order number 2069 issued by the office of governor Ron DeSantis on March 20th, 2020 and extended by executive orders 2112 and 2114, allowing local government bodies to conduct meetings of their governing boards without having a quorum of its, present, of its members present physically or at any specific location, and utilizing communications media technology, such as telephonic or video conferencing, as provided by section 12054, paragraph 5B2 of Florida statutes. Procedures for public comment will be explained by the process coordinator shortly. At this time, the members of the forward Pinellas board appearing remotely for this meeting will be stated by the technology moderator, Sarah Caper. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to ask each board member individually to confirm that you are here, able to hear us and can respond. Please note that everyone but myself in the chair is currently on mute. You should be able to unmute yourself, but if you are having trouble, I can also unmute you. The board members appearing virtually today are Chair Commissioner Dave Eggers, Pinellas County. Good to be here, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Vice Chair, Council Member Darden Rice, City of St. Petersburg. Present, thank you. Thank you. Treasurer, Mayor Cookie Kennedy, City of Indian Rocks Beach, representing the beach communities. Mayor Kennedy, I can unmute you. Hi, I'm here. Thank you. Secretary Commissioner Janet Long, Pinellas County, representing PSTA. Oh, I'm here. Thank you. Mayor Julie Bajowski, City of Dunedin. Hey, everybody, I'm here today. Turban Springs, representing the cities of Turban Springs, Oldmar, and Zeke Harbor. Here, thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Susie Sofer, City of Bel Air Bluffs, representing the inland communities. Hi everyone, I'm here. Hi, thank you. Vice Mayor David Albritton, City of Clearwater. Good afternoon, present. Good afternoon. Council Member Brandy Gabbard, City of St. Petersburg. Hello everyone. Hi, thank you. Mayor Sandra Bradbury, City of Pinellas Park. I am present and it's good to virtually see everybody. Can't wait till we can physically. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Karen Seal, Pinellas County. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Commissioner Ken Welch, Pinellas County. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. 
The board members are here and accounted for. Please note that everyone except for the chair and process coordinator will now be on mute. Process coordinator Tina Jevlon, will you please state the procedures to be followed during this virtual meeting? Good afternoon, everyone. I'll take the next few minutes to review the process that has been devised for this meeting. There will be a technology moderator and a process coordinator for this virtual meeting who will be tasked with facilitating the meeting. For the meeting, the technology moderator will be Sarah Caper, principal planner with Forward Pinellas. And the process coordinator will be myself, Tina Jablon, executive administrative secretary for Forward Pinellas. Any person may be heard by the Forward Pinellas board for not more than three minutes on any proposition before the board unless such time is modified by the chair. The options and methods for doing that will be explained in a moment. To ensure an accurate record of the meeting, when addressing the board, the member of the public must first state and spell his or her name, state his or her address, and announce what agenda item they are speaking to. Throughout the meeting, we ask all presenters and commenters to identify themselves by name each time they speak, unless they have been properly introduced or specifically called upon by name. Additionally, please be mindful of not speaking over one another. Prior to any vote on any matter, the chair will seek public comment. The technology moderator or process coordinator will then ask for a virtual hand raising of all those wishing to speak on an item. The number of hands will be noted and reported to the chair. The technology moderator will then unmute each speaker in the order in which the, the hands were raised, allowing each speaker three minutes or as the time is modified by the chair. Finally, the chair may seek information from forward Pinellas staff, the presenter, or other sources. For each item requiring a vote, the board member making a motion should identify themselves clearly and state their motion. The board member making the second should identify themselves clearly and state, and state that they are seconding the motion. All votes will be accomplished today by a roll call vote. We ask that everyone please silence all their cell phones and other noise-making devices. And we ask that um, during presentations that we allow the presenters adequate time to finish the entire presentation before we interrupt with any questions or comments. With that, Commissioner Eggers, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Tina, uh, for uh, getting us all set and ready to go. And uh, we're gonna start with um, just one recognition today, but actually two. Um, I think uh, our secretary, David Gwynn is with us today, so I always, like to recognize him when he comes to our meetings because it's uh, been a really positive and great relationship with FDOT. And I think they, uh, the secretary is here. So just wanted everybody to be aware of that. And secondly, just to acknowledge uh, Witt, uh, five years of service, which I just can't believe that he's been here already five years. Um, but in any event, it's just amazing. He's done such great work. And we're all gonna get a chance to, to chit chat about him a little later when we do his review. But um, in any event, welcome, uh, or glad to have you here. We're so glad you came um, to be a part of our organization and you've done some really great things for us and, uh, and continue to make improvements along the way. So I uh, just really wanted to say thank you, Wit, and just give you a few minutes if you wanted to reflect a little bit on your five years, just a bit. Well, thank you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, it's been my pleasure and I've had a, um, uh, a great time over the last five years. This is my dream job. And I told you all that when I interviewed. And um, amazingly, I still feel that way. Um, I've really gotten to know the county even better than I thought I did. And uh, the more I get to know it, the more I like it. Uh, and the five years has just kind of blown by. What I've really appreciated, though, is getting to know uh, you all, uh, my board members, but also the elected officials of Pinellas County. And one thing that's my takeaway from that is that we have a tremendous um, bank of talent uh, in all of our communities in Pinellas County, people who really care about our county. And um, to learn from them and experience um, their knowledge, uh, their insights, and particularly people like uh, former Commissioner John Maroney, who is the chair of this board, um, uh, Council Member Jim Kennedy, uh, who was the chair of this board when I was hired, we have some outstanding talent and um, you all are part of that and it's just uh, really been refreshing. And I also want to say that um, I couldn't uh, even hope to be doing as good a job as, as, as you all think I am uh, without the help of my staff. And uh, we have a great team and uh, I'm really proud of them. And I think you're seeing 
with these virtual meetings, um, how they can stretch and really respond. So um, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, it's, I hope for another five or 10 years. <laughs> well, thank you, Whit. And I'm glad you, uh, you commented on how, how they're doing, uh, getting these virtual meetings uh, together because it's just unbelievable the detail to make sure that it comes off right and uh, that, we do, that we do our residents proud, uh, the work that we do today. So thank you, Tina. Thank you, the whole team, Sarah, the whole, the whole team for, for all of your work. Um, we're going to move into the consent agenda. And uh, we have um, four items, approval of the minutes from the May 13th meeting, approval of committee appointments, approval of procurement 2002 consultant selection and agreement, and approval of the update to the transportation disadvantage service plan. Does anybody want to pull any items from the agenda, from, from the consent? I can't see anybody that wants to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and ask that uh, we have that roll call vote. Uh, I need a motion first for approval. Motion approve. to approve. Second. Good luck, Before Tina. we have the roll call vote. <laughs> uh, yeah. We need to. Oh, hold, on, hold on one minute. Hold on one second. Sarah. Do we have the, the maker of the motion? I think what Sarah was going to say is that we need to receive public comment on the consent I agenda before that. I get that. I want to get the motion on the floor. Okay. And then we'll take and then we'll take co public comments. Who Do made the motion, that? please? Okay, I have uh, Vice Mayor Albritton and Mayor Bradbury. Okay, thank you. Now, Sarah, go ahead. Sorry. Anyone wishing to address the board should raise their hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. I'll give. Uh, any members of the public a second? Seeing none, uh, Commissioner Eggers, there are no members of the public wishing to speak on this item. Okay, then we'll go ahead and do, uh, Tina, if you'll do a roll call, please. Mayor Bujalski? Aye. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer? Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton? Aye. Mayor Kennedy, Sarah, she's asked that you unmute her. Mayor Kennedy, I will unmute you and just, just trying to find you on the list. I apologize for the delay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Council Member Rice? Yes. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Council Member Gabbard? Yes. Commissioner Seal? Yes. Mayor Bradbury? Aye. And Commissioner Long? Aye. Commissioner Eggers? Aye. And that carries unanimously. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll go ahead and move on to our uh, public hearing agenda, a uh, section of our agenda. And this month we'll hear the PPC public hearing items first, and then we'll be that will be followed by the uh, presentation from FDOT uh, uh, prior to the MPO public, uh, pub public hearing itself. Uh, so the public uh, PPC public hearings will be conducted as follows. I will first ask forward Pinellas staff to present the items. Applicant local governments are available for questions as needed. Once each presentation is given, I will then ask for proponents of the proposal to speak and then opponents. And finally, any other citizens who wish to comment or ask questions on the case. We will then hear rebuttal by the applicant as necessary and a staff response or summary. At that time, the board will ask questions and then I will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate and take action. And Nusheen Rahman has three cases for us today. First item is 4A1, it's uh, case number 2010 uh, from the city of Clearwater. Nusheen. Good afternoon everyone. For the record, Nusheen Rahman with Board Pinellas. The first case being presented today is CW 2010 submitted by the city of Clearwater. Thank you. 
The city seeks to amend properties from the retail and services, residential low medium, preservation and recreation open space categories to the multimodal corridor and preservation categories. And the purpose of the proposed amendment is to allow for the redevelopment of the property along this section of the US 19 corridor. The subject properties are located on 24323 and 24479 US Highway 19 North with an area size of approximately 26.3 acres. Its existing uses include vehicle storage, indoor recreation, and a closed mobile home park with surrounding uses including commercial, preservation, and mini storage properties. The map in front of you portrays the current multimodal corridor category with activity centers in blue to the north and south of the amendment area. The purpose of the multimodal corridor plan category is to recognize those corridors of critical importance in the movement of people and goods throughout the county and that are served by a combination of walking, bicycling, automobile, bus, or rail. The city of Clearwater adopted the US 19 corridor redevelopment plan in 2012 to serve as the guiding vision to strengthen the identity, design, mobility, and competitiveness of the corridor in the region. Furthermore, this category supports mixed use development that is supported by and designed to facilitate transit and is particularly appropriate for creating transit connections between activity centers, such as this amendment area. The action would further strengthen the linkage between the activity center in the countryside area and the activity center in the Sunset Point Road area to the north and south of the existing multimodal corridor. The following is an image of the front of the subject property located at 24323 US 19. Next, an image of the front of the subject property located at 24479 US 19. The next image is the south of the first subject property located at 24323. Then an image of the north of the same subject property. This next image is the north of the subject property located at 24479 US 19. And lastly, an image of the west of the same subject property. The map in front of you portrays the current countywide plan categories, including the permitted uses for the retail and services category. Next, the permitted uses for the residential low medium, preservation and recreation open space categories. This slide depicts the use of the density and intensity standards for the various permitted uses of the retail and services category, the residential low medium category on this slide and furthermore, the density and intensity standards for the preservation and recreation and open space categories. These particular properties are part of the city's US Highway 19 corridor redevelopment plan. And as part of this plan, an enclave of unincorporated properties, such as the two in question in this amendment were identified to be annexed into the city and later anticipated to be amended to the multimodal corridor category, hence the proposed amendment. This next map portrays the proposed multimodal corridor category, as well as the portion of the property that will remain under the preservation category. This next slide continues to identify the density and intensity standards for the various permitted uses of the multimodal corridor category, as well as the preservation category. Amendments to the multimodal corridor are, are also required to meet the planning and urban design principles described in the countywide plan strategies. The following table gives examples of how the city addresses the various principles in their US 19 zoning district and development standards. The next slide continues the examples of how these principles are met. For example, the development standards will limit blank facades and require pedestrian oriented design for structured parking as part of the ground floor design and use principle. In conclusion, the proposed amendment is appropriate for the intended purpose and is consistent with the locational characteristics for the multimodal corridor and preservation categories. And on balance, it can be concluded that the proposed amendment is consistent with the relevant countywide considerations contained in section 6531 of the countywide rules. The following is an analysis of those relevant countywide considerations taken into account. And lastly, there were no public comments for KCW 2010, concluding my presentation. Back to you, Commissioner Eggers. Thank you, Nasheen. Um, I'm gonna ask for proponents first, if there, if there are any proponents out there wishing to be heard. 
Any proponents who wish to address the board should raise their hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. It looks like we have one proponent wishing to speak, Katie Cole. You have three minutes. I will unmute you and allow oh, wow. you to speak. You have so you got to come minutes. in here and get a picture of this. Hi, Janet, you're, Janet, you're not on mute. Uh, go ahead. There you are. Hi, uh, Mr. Eggers, uh, former Pinellas board members. It is nice to see you all convening, and we appreciate um, getting back to business here. This is Katie Cole with Hill Ward Henderson, 600 Cleveland Street, Suite 800, Clearwater, Florida. We represent the property owner who submitted its application some time ago to City of Clearwater for annexation. Um, the city process doesn't require any type of land use map amendment because this was always contemplated in the US 19 corridor. So the property has been annexed and the local land use is already US 19, um, but it is necessary to go through this process with Forward Pinellas. So uh, we appreciate your support and happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions for Katie? I don't see any. Do you see, Sarah? I can't. I don't. Uh, uh, board members, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand feature. Okay, and now we'll go ahead. And since there's nobody else, um, nobody, uh, no other proponents, if we can hear from any opponents or any, any citizens to be heard. Any opponents wishing to speak at this time, please press the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. Seeing none, any citizens wishing to be heard to address the board, please raise your hand by hitting the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. Commissioner Eggers, I see no one wishing to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. Um, again, just reminding everybody, uh, if anybody has any questions, please, you know, hit the, uh, the, the, the Zoom, raise their hand in the Zoom format, please. That would be helpful. Um, are there any questions the board has uh, of staff? I don't, I don't see any, Sarah, so. Uh, I believe Commissioner Welch does. Um, yeah, and maybe somebody can send me a uh, call me or chat, but I don't see a raise hand button on my screen. Um, In order to see that, if you move your mouse, are you using an iPad, Commissioner Welch? Uh, MacBook. I'm I'm not familiar with MacBook, but usually if you move Just, your mouse and you okay. click on the participants button. That's where you'll be able to see a raise. You can raise your hand, start and stop your video, and mute and unmute yourself. It's usually at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Well, I do have stop video at the bottom, but there's no raise hand. So I'll just check with our IT folks. Well, we'll be looking for your hand then because Mayor okay. Kennedy's having the same problems today. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. So you were just pointing out that you didn't have that ability to, to yeah. do that. Okay. Yeah. We'll just keep an eye out for folks to raising their hands. I don't see any. Did you see anybody raising their hands, Sarah? I do not see anyone okay. raising their hand. So then we'll close the, uh, the we'll close the meeting and I'll need a motion and a second uh, for approval of the case of, of the plan. I'll make I'll the move motion. to approve. Okay, Please I have uh, I have a motion by uh, Vice Mayor Sofer and a second by Vice Mayor Albritton. Okay, we'll do a roll call, please. Mayor Bujowski? Aye. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer? Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton? Aye. Mayor Kennedy? Got my hand up. Uh, Thank yeah. you. We, we can hear you now. Thank you. Council Member Rice? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Council Member Gabbard? Yes. Commissioner Seal? Yes. Mayor Bradbury? Aye. Commissioner Long? Commissioner Long, did you, there she is. Yes. 
And Sorry. Commissioner Eggers. Aye. And that carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next case, case uh, 2011, and we'll go back to Nasheen. This is from the city of Largo. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. The next case being presented is CW 2011, submitted by the city of Largo. The city seeks to amend a property from the public semi-public category to the retail and services category. And the purpose of the proposed amendment is to allow for the development of a gas station and convenience store. The subject property is located at 2188 58th Street North with an area size of approximately 1.06 acres. It is currently being used as a grass parking lot with surrounding uses, including residential, administrative offices, and an existing convenience store. The following is an image of the front of the subject property. Just to the east of the subject property is the existing gas station and convenience store, which is also under the retail and services category and will be raised and incorporated into the proposed development to form a new development with an area size of approximately 1.6 acres. Next is an image of the south of the subject property. And lastly, an image of the administrative offices located to the west of the subject property. The map in front of you portrays the current countywide plan category of what? public semi-public. Based on its permitted uses listed in front of you, a gas station and convenience store would not be an allowable use under the current category, hence the proposed amendment to retail and services, which is portrayed in the map in front of you. Based on its permitted uses, a gas station and convenience store is an allowable use under the proposed category. In conclusion, the proposed amendment is appropriate for the intended purpose and is consistent with the locational characteristics for the retail and services category. And on balance, it can be concluded that the proposed amendment is consistent with the relevant countywide considerations contained in section 6531 of the countywide rules. In front of you is, anal is an analysis of the relevant countywide considerations taken into account. And lastly, there were no public comments for KCW 2011, concluding this presentation. Back to you. Thank you, Nasheen. Um, uh, let's check to see, first of all, if there's any proponents that would like to be heard. Any proponents that wish to be heard, please use the raised hand button or hit star nine on the phone. I do see Jeremy Anderson wishes to speak on this. I will unmute you. You have three minutes. Mr. Anderson. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, <laughs> so I didn't realize I needed to click unmute myself. So uh, again, this is Jeremy Anderson. Um, I'm at 1201 Louisiana Avenue, Winter Park, Florida. Uh, I am a civil engineer on this project. Um, and I'd like to you know, thank you, first of all, for, for your attention on, on this project. Um, there, uh, the, the, the project is basically the expansion of the existing 7-Eleven facility right there in the corner of 58th and Roosevelt. Um, and, uh, so with it, we were bringing into conformance certain items of the lot geometry that, that don't, uh, meet code currently. We're working with the city now on the right-of-way expansion for 58th Street, and there's other safety upgrades we're doing to the driveways in the facility, uh, in general which I can get into um, if necessary, but um, I just wanted to mention that we're here uh, if anyone has any questions related to the proposal. Um, and so we're here for, for any questions you have. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Are there any other proponents that wish to address the board? Please do so by raising your hand or pressing the star nine on your phone. Okay, are there anybody there, uh, any opponents that would like to, to address the board? Any opponents wishing to address the board, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button or by hitting star nine on your phone. I see no opponents. Citizens to be heard, did you need to ask that or, or do you already do that? Yes, any citizens to be heard that wish to address the board, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on your phone. 
Commissioner Eggers, I see no one else wishing to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. We'll close the public hearing and we'll go back to the board for any questions. Again, remember if you can raise your hand in Zoom, otherwise just raise your hand and we'll try to get your questions addressed by staff. Anybody with questions? I don't see anybody, so unless you stop me, Sarah, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a motion uh, to approve the uh, am amendment, please. I have a motion by Mayor Kennedy, it looks like. Okay. And a second by Mayor second. Bradley. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, can we do a roll call, please? Mayor Bujowski? Aye. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer? Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton? Aye. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Council Member Rice? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Council Member Gabbard? Yes. Commissioner Seal? Yes. Mayor Bradbury? Aye. Commissioner Long? Aye. And Commissioner Eggers? Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you. And we'll move on to uh, case uh, 2012. Again, this is City of Largo. Machine. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. The last case being presented is CW 2012, submitted by the City of Largo. The city seeks to amend a property from the public semi-public category to the residential low medium category. And the purpose of the proposed amendment is to allow for a single family residential development. The subject property is located at 2050 58th Street North with an area size of approximately 5.01 acres. Its existing use is currently vacant with surrounding uses, including office and residential properties. The following is an image of the front of the subject property. Next, an image of the offices located to the east of the subject property. And lastly, an image of residential properties located to the north of the subject property. The map in front of you portrays the current countywide plan map category of public semi-public under which a single family residential development would not be a permitted use. Hence, the proposed amendment to residential low medium, which is portrayed in the map in front of you, and based on its permitted uses would allow for the development of single family residential. In conclusion, the proposed amendment is appropriate for the intended purpose and is consistent with the locational characteristics for the residential low medium category. And on balance, it can be concluded that the proposed amendment is consistent with the relevant countywide considerations contained in section 6531 of the countywide rules. Listed in front of you is the analysis of the relevant countywide considerations taken into account when reviewing this case. And finally, there were no public comments for case CW 2012 concluding my presentations. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. Thank you again, Nasheen, appreciate that. Um, well, I guess we'll go to first to proponents. If there's any proponents that would like to, uh, to address the board, please. Any proponents wishing to address the board, please raise your hand by hitting the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. We do have uh, Mr. James Vernon. I will allow you to talk and unmute you. You have three minutes. Uh, excuse me. Good afternoon, Chairman Eggers and members of the board and staff. Uh, my name is James Vernon. I'm an attorney in Clearwater, Florida. My address is 1721 Rainbow Drive, Clearwater, Florida, 33755. Uh, first of all, thank you all very much for the effort in this, and particularly, I presume, you, Sarah, that all the work it takes to put this together. So we're very grateful that we can keep this moving and for all of your efforts. Uh, I don't have anything to add that staff hasn't already presented. I just wanted to be available for questions in the event there were any questions on the application. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. I will go now, is there any, no, no other proponents? Any other proponents, please hit the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. There are no additional proponents. Okay, then we'll, well, I'll go ahead and ask for opponents now, please. Any opponents wishing to address the board, please hit the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. I see no opponents. 
Okay, and then we'll move to citizens. Any other any, citizens? Any citizens wishing to be heard? To address the board, please hit the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. Commissioner Eggers, I see no citizens wishing to be heard. That concludes everyone wishing to speak on this item. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And again, we'll ask the board if they have any questions uh, of staff, please at this time, let us know by raising your hand or hitting the uh, Zoom, raise your hand. Thank you. I don't see anybody, Sarah. So um, we'll go ahead and ask for a motion to approve uh, this case. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Albritton and a second by Mayor Bradbury. We'll do a, go ahead and do a roll call, please. Mayor Bujowski. Aye. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer. Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton. Aye. Mayor Kennedy. Yes. Council Member Rice. Aye. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Council Member Gabbard. Yes. Commissioner Seal. Yeah. Mayor Bradbury. Aye. Commissioner Long. Yes. And Commissioner Eggers. Aye. That carries unanimously. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Thank you, Nasheen and the, and the team for getting those, uh, those three cases prepared and ready for us today. Appreciate that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to a presentation from FDOT on um, a proposed uh, Palm Harbor roundabout. It is part of our 2021-2025 tip, but because there was uh, a lot of uh, engagement but from the community uh, up in Palm Harbor that we thought it would be a good idea to have a separate presentation and uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to Witt as he introduces the item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I wanted to just provide a little bit of context for why we invited um, the department to come and, and give this presentation today. Uh, as Craig Fox will let you know, this has been an ongoing initiative probably for the last five or six years to look at a, a proposed roundabout in the Alt-19 corridor in Palm Harbor at Florida Avenue. This is um, a result, uh, at least in uh, large part, from the downtown Palm Harbor master plan that Pinellas County Planning Department uh, has prepared. And uh, that was um, a key project that was identified really for two reasons. One, to facilitate safe crossing of Alt-19 because there is um, the commercial core of downtown Old Palm Harbor is to the east. And then there have been some recent businesses opening up on the west side, and then you have the uh, Pinellas Trail on the west side, along with Pop Stancil Park. So there is just a, an increasing amount of connectivity uh, east and west in that location. The department um, has looked at different options. The roundabout was not the first option that was um, brought forward. Um, we've had a number of meetings with the public. Uh, not only has the county planning department and FDOT held meetings in Palm Harbor at the high school, uh, but we have also had public forums at the Palm Harbor Library, uh, and a number of surveys have also been taken of the public. And one thing that we found with any new uh, type of transportation project is that it will always generate some controversy. Uh, and roundabouts are, are not new uh, to Pinellas County, but they're also not common. And, um, you know, I, I want to use the hashtag not all roundabouts, uh, because not all roundabouts are like the Clearwater roundabout. And we have different kinds of roundabouts uh, all over our county and increasingly in the state of Florida. In fact, um, the city of Sarasota is working with FDOT to install roundabouts on US Highway 41, just north of downtown Sarasota, and those are under construction. So um, this is a new concept on a state road in Pinellas County. We think this is a, um, a good balanced approach to managing both safety and visibility because it is sort of a gateway feature into the Palm Harbor commercial area. And uh, we do have uh, a lack of traffic signals through that area. So there does tend to be some speeding issues. So I'll turn it over to Craig. I just wanted to provide that context that we have had a good amount of outreach over the last five years on this uh, proposed project. Thank you, Witt. Craig, welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you, Commissioner Likewise. Eggers, and thank you, Witt. Um, and thank you, everybody, uh, for giving me time today uh, to present, for, for us to present on this. Uh, just give me one second. I just need to request the control. All right. So we're here to present on the Palm Harbor and Florida Avenue roundabout. The project number is 437636-1. There we go. So just to review the area, Alt 19 has around 21,500 vehicles per day. Uh, currently, there's two 11-foot through lanes along with a center two-way left turn lane. Uh, there are bike lanes in both directions, and the Pinellas Trail is on the west side. And as you can see on here, the Pinellas, uh, the north arrow is north, uh, sorry, north is to the up side of the screen, and the Pinellas Trail runs along the west side of the screen. So just a little recap uh, for project history for any folks um, you know that are that are a little bit new to hearing this about this. There were multiple traffic signal requests at all 19 and Florida Avenue going, and that's actually going past um, a couple decades. Uh, traffic signals are governed by uh, warrants that are set by uh, the federal government, and repeatedly, every time we analyzed it, um, unfortunately, that intersection it was not able, it was not warranted to have a traffic signal there. Going throughout the years, the Florida Department of Transportation, like many uh, US DOTs, have looked at alternative intersections and roundabouts has been one that's coming up over the past few decades. So we looked at this for a potential solution, along with another, another potential solution being a traffic signal at Alt-19 and Nebraska Avenue. We held two public workshops in 2015. It was a pre public presentation on September 29th. And then December 8th, we came back with another public workshop. And at that time, it was, it was it, at that time, the department decided to pull back based on community concerns. And we started to evaluate the area a little bit more. Uh, we since then also installed a RRFB or a mid-block crosswalk to the north side of Florida Avenue. And we analyzed that for about a year. After analyzing it for a year, we realized that uh, while we did have some good yielding uh, results, drivers meaning that drivers were yielding for pedestrians that activated it, uh, we felt like it could be a little bit better and that, that the community could be a little bit safer if we still went forward with a roundabout. So in uh, 2019, uh, this past November, we had a public workshop again. And we also attended, uh, it was non-DOC organized, but we also attended a forum December 12th to answer the public's questions and concerns at that event also. Now what I'm showing on the screen are the public comment results. And this is resulting from the public workshop uh, that we had in uh, late last year. We had around 62 comments came in. And if, if you add up all the tallies, it equals out to 66 total different options. It's because some folks selected multiple options in one comment and we wanted to make sure that we recorded all of those. So as you can see, the roundabout had around 19 yeses, uh, 21 noes. And then uh, the third one, kind of a dis more distant third was the Nebraska Avenue traffic signal, uh, a Florida traffic signal, pet overpass, roundabout all 19, and, uh, and Nebraska, and some other options also. And the next slide breaks it down into, into percentages. And I kind of want to reiterate again what, what Whitman mentioned before about, about new, um, new transportation uh, technologies or features. Uh, roundabouts typically, when the, especially when it's the first time inter introduced to a community, uh, there's often around 60% you know, opposition to it on average. And that's, and, and that, that's largely due to you know, perception and also um, folks experience with, with maybe some, some older design uh, roundabouts that aren't necessarily designed with the safety features that modern roundabouts have. So, uh, so while, while a slight majority did uh, still say no to a roundabout, um, th this is not something that's unusual for the initial roundabouts. And what we typically notice is that as time progresses and, and the community gets a little more used to it, um, those public perceptions can, can often change. So what I have shown here is initial roundabout concept. 
we have modified it since uh, that's based on coordination with uh, local local partners and, and some local businesses and the impacts there. And I'll get into the changes that we've made next. But just some just some key topics is that the existing uh, RFB that stands for rapid rectangular flashing beacon or the mid block crosswalk to the north on the screen it is not shown in this area, but it's to the north uh, in this area where my mouse is going around. That one will be removed and we will replace uh, the alt 19 legs of the crosswalk. So here where I move my mouse and also on the south side here will will uh, RFBs will be placed in at those locations to assist pedestrians crossing. Craig, uh, I'm not sure we're, we're showing where the uh, I, I didn't see those uh, the new location. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, can you see my mouse on the screen? I'm not. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh OK. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought folks could see my mouse. I apologize. OK, so so if you look, uh, OK, the best way to describe this, if you look at the Pinellas Trail on the north side and as it kind of shifts in the existing condition today, uh, there's a gap um, right there in the middle, just a little north of the roundabout circle. And that's where the crosswalk would go in. Um, Commissioner Eggers. Did. So that's the northern one where, where the gap is bit between that, that green median then. And then on the south side, there's another gap in that green median. And that's where the crosswalk would go along with the R. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I see your arrow. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. No problem, sir. So the Pinellas Trail it would shift to the west also, and this is to make sure, and, and as you can see from the existing aerial, if we did not shift the trail, that would have basically pedestrians crossing right in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the um in the roadway in the middle of the roundabout. That's you know, we all know that's that's not safe. So we're gonna shift it out to the west. Uh this still does remain within publicly owned right-of-way. Um so, so there will be no right-of-way impacts on the west side. On the east side of the roundabout, uh there are there are two sculptures. Um, th th there are two public art sculptures around there, and we will preserve those and we will relocate them within uh, the public right of way. And, and, and that's a conversation that uh, that's ongoing. Uh, there are also uh, some roundabout clips from the northeast side and the southeast side of the roundabout. And that's that's to fit in uh, the modified sidewalk uh, that will have to be, be adjusted also. So that was kind of the initial concept. The next slide I'm going to show has been a modified concept, and I'll be able to go through some of the changes that we've made. So on the left side of the screen, I have the adjustments that are made, and I'll just go, I'd like to go through them one by one. So one thing we did, did is that we shrunk the, the Florida Avenue splitter islands to accommodate businesses. And the splitter islands, uh, splitter islands, or you could call them medians, are, are these areas right here where a mouse is going around. So, so that basically separates the traffic. And the reason why we were able to do this on Florida Avenue is because the speeds along Florida Avenue are much slower than the speeds along Alt-19. So we were able to, to shrink those down to better serve uh, both day's collision on the northwest side and also the brewery uh, right there in, in, in the northwest corner also. On the east side, uh, the business on the south east in the southeast corner. If that if we did not shrink that splitter island, they'd have more difficulty making turns out, and also it would limit the uh, the access to to Bill's Mobile. Folks could still get there by doing a U turn, but but since but since uh, um, the slower speeds enabled us to shrink the that median down, we're able to do that to allow uh, more access into the Bill's Mobile gas station also. Another change that, that's in the works is adjusting driveways to suit the business requests. Now, one thing I do want to note on here, this is the, and this is going to, look, little, this is going to get a little bit confusing, but the next slide has the, has the driveways actually in the right location. Um, one, one area of note is Bill's Mobile Gas Station in the northeast corner. Here, while this is the um, official concept, we are, we, we are in uh, current negotiations uh, with, with the right-of-way corner clip. And, and in those discussions, uh, we've already ha had one-on-one -on -one discussions uh, with the owner of the, of the Northeast parcel. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna shift that driveway further to the north, and that's to enable them to make southbound left turns into that parcel. The next slide I'll show um, has that change in there, but based on kind of like the legality of, of the right-of-way discussions, I, we, we have to show 
this, this concept right here. So if anybody's asking why that driveway is still for the south, it, it's just kind of um, it's just kind of, kind of the paper we have to go through um, to get to the right of way discussions. But I'll be able to talk on that more in the next slide a little bit. And the other change that we've done is that we've re relocated uh, the north, the sidewalk in the northeast quadrant of the intersection. And I'll try to zoom in a bit uh, so you all can see it a little clearer. But uh, while doing field, field reviews, one thing we notice is that, especially in the gas station location, is that some folks, some drivers, uh, as you can see right there are the gas pumps on the south end. And we noticed that as a motorist would be parking their vehicle there to fill up, uh, another motorist that came in would oftentimes either drive on the sidewalk where my mouse is going across or just park their vehicle on the sidewalk. So to, 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 to kind of relieve that safety concern there, one thing we're going to do is we're going to take that sidewalk and actually shift it down further south towards Florida Avenue. This will give a lot more space uh, to, the, to the mobile gas station for, for not only vehicle um, circulation, but it'll also be a lot safer for, for pedestrians as it'll be brought down a little quicker uh, close to the driveway so drivers will be able to see them a little bit better. So that's going to reduce um, some conflicts um, in that parcel also. So as stated before, uh, we are currently going on in right-of-way discussions for those corner clips. So right now I'll go to the next slide, uh, which isn't the official concept. And this one, and we'll have to adjust our orientation a little bit to, to look at this slide. So now north is actually facing to the right side of the screen. So that's the north arrow, and north is faced to the right side of the screen. You can see the Pinellas Trail is on the west side. That's now at the top of the screen. And the gas station in question is down here in the, in the blank white area. Uh, to the bottom right side of my screen. Here you can see the adjusted driveway location. Uh, this is the one that we've been in discussions with the property owner there. And I'll zoom in a little bit to call more attention to it. And what this new location would allow was any southbound traffic going on Alt-19. Now, if they want to make that left turn into the gas station, they can pull into the median and make that turn in there too. Another thing is that this will also help uh, vehicles exiting as they'll be able to make that left turn to get to easily access the roundabout. Th that was a very important concern to, to the business owners around there and, and we want to make sure that, that we provided that. So although this might not be in the official concept, th this, is, this is the commitment uh, that we made to the property owner that we intend to follow through with. I'll zoom in all the way. Okay. That actually brings uh, me to the end of the presentation. Uh, just one note as far as uh, project management change. Um, I was original project manager on this project, but since then I've actually um, transferred positions now. So I'm in a planning group. And uh, so we have a new PM, his name's Trong Nugent, and, and his PM activities on this project right now. I'm in close contact um, with Trong. We talk all the time about the project. Um, so, so I just want to drop his contact information on there and you can call either one of us and, and we'll both be gladly to assist. Um, so now I'd like to take any questions or concerns. Craig, thank, thank you, Craig. Appreciate that uh, presentation and, um, and uh, we have you nearby because I think there's a, there is a lot of history to this. So we want to make sure that, you know, we pass that accurate history along to the next project person. Um, we do have some questions. I can see they're they're lining up, but again, I see they're starting to use the Zoom and or hands. But uh, I don't know how we're going to prioritize that. But I know that um, uh, Vice Mayor Albritton is up first on the uh, the Zoom hands. So go ahead. Well, with uh, since you mentioned Clearwater and uh, roundabouts, I just wanted to throw in a couple of things that we've learned. Um, I think that. Um, our roundabout works a lot better than four traffic lights that we had stacked up there. But one of the things that, uh, that we've learned over the years, uh, and by the way, I'm glad you're not putting a fountain in the middle of it. That's, that's nice. <laughs> but the, uh, I know you have to have pavers around for the big like fire trucks and things. We had that and we were finding that it invited people to just walk right out in the middle of the roundabout. They thought it was a sidewalk. So I would suggest eliminating that. Uh, you know, once in a while, if a big truck needs to run across, they can run across the grass um, or make it in a way that it won't invite pedestrians and then possibly move the crosswalks back from the intersection um, 
that was one of the things we did. We had an we had a crosswalk right off the roundabout, and we found that a lot of people, as they made the turn, didn't see pedestrians. But if they could make the turn, and you know, straighten their car up, um, moving it back away from the intersection was a little safer for pedestrians. So those were the only comments that that I have. Okay, thank you. Sarah, I'm going to let you navigate the, the names. I just see a number two down below, so I don't know. Sure. Um, Commissioner Seal, you have your hand raised next. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so um, what I don't understand from the concept, and um, Council Member Albritton sort of touched on it, but the roundabout itself, will it be completely at grade or will it be raised? Um, what kind of construction will take place in on the physical roundabout? Yeah, so so the roundabout will be at the same grade as the current roadway. Um, what the, um, the only parts that will be raised will be those medians. So when you're approaching the roundabout, those splitter islands that I was talking about, those will be raised and those are to um, protect the pedestrians, although we are constructing them in a manner that they are mountable by say emergency vehicles so there's a fire truck or, or an ambulance or a fire or, or a police car going through they could still utilize uh, those medians also the interior of the roundabout um it, it, so one thing that's kind of the brick stamp areas that that's actually uh, we like to call that a truck apron uh, those will be slightly raised a little bit but then again they will be mountable curbs so that emergency vehicles and also larger trucks can still utilize that in the case that, that they need to make a turning movement um, that they can't just maintain with, within the road, within the circulatory roadway. Okay, I was just curious because I was in Tampa and went by the new roundabout that's being constructed near Armature Works. And um, I watched the truck in front of me and it was just a regular truck just run right over the roundabout so that it was at grade. So, um, okay, the other question I had was, um, how far away, and I understand we want to be respectful and helpful towards businesses, but the gas station, um, the ability to go left turn in and left turn out, how far away is that from the roundabout? And um, I, yeah, the, the, just give me one second. I don't remember at the top of my head, but I can actually uh, get that information for you in, in a second because it's actually the... Okay. And the reason I ask and just express some concern is I truly believe that when people are using roundabouts, they're not always paying as strict attention to what's going to happen when they come out of the roundabout. And so having a potential left turn in and left turn out could provide a conflictual situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I'm almost there. Sorry for the delay, folks. And I think Council Member Albritton made a good point about keeping the pedestrians further away from the actual roundabout. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing that's going to be on just 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 want to make a note also uh, one thing that's going to also really enhance um, the safety of pedestrians out there would, would be also uh, those those flashing yellow lights across um, all 19. Um, we do see that that folks are yielding at the existing one out there. Um, so, so having those, those there would, would greatly increase it. And, and I just also kind of want to go through some of the theory a, a, as to why we like to keep crosswalks closer to the, closer to the um, intersection. And the, the main reason is actually to encourage folks to use those crosswalks more. Um, because what we notice is that when you place them a little further away from the crosswalk, uh, people are a little bit less willing, like, like basically folks just take, just like water takes a path of least resistance. Um, pedestrians also, you know, take the path of least resistance. So if there's a shorter crosswalk that they may perceive in their head to be safer, um, they'll likely take that and just avoid walking like, you know, 10 or 40 feet, extra feet to get to um, uh, 
the the the, the legit legitimate crosswalk. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just having um, computer issues. Um, can you do my phone on Google Maps? And then, so so the, the, so, so we're getting that distance um, for you. Uh, would it be all right? It, do you have another question that I could answer in the meantime while we're getting that? Mayor uh, Budowski no. had a question. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Steele, are you done? I'm done. Okay, thank you. Mayor Bujalski had a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, because I switched microphones. I've got a couple questions. Um, uh, and Whit might need to answer this question. I don't know, but where does the Palm Harbor Chamber and their Merchants Association in the downtown area, where do they stand on all this? My understanding is that the uh, uh, downtown merchants have been in favor of the roundabouts. They are the ones generally who've been speaking in favor of of having this. Uh, they uh, actively participated in the um, uh, in the forums and in the Palm Harbor Master Plan. So that whole uh, notion of creating a, a gateway uh, and entrance feature into that commercial district uh, is something that they very much supported. I won't and say they're okay with again. Nebraska versus Florida and all that? Well, the issue with Nebraska is that it's not that main uh, direction into that commercial core uh, where there's on-street parking and things like that. It's, um, it's a little bit more of the north side of where the core uh, of that commercial area is. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've been, and, and honestly, it's the better connection west because Nebraska does not go through. Okay. Um, the trail crossing, which has kind of been brought up, the crosswalk, but the trail crossing really concerns me from a safety perspective. I know that even in our own city, we've talked about roundabouts on Skinner Boulevard and everybody is concerned about the distance between the trail and the roundabout. And ours is actually farther away and there's still concerns being expressed. Whereas this, it's a part of it it's a part of that crosswalk. And I'm very concerned about, um, I think I think it was Commissioner Seal that mentioned, um, you know, you're not paying as much attention when you're coming out of it. And if you're going to take a, a turn there and there is the trail people, I mean, I you know, in my city wit, <laughs> even with the wonderful uh, rapid flashing beacons and the, everything that we have at the trail people don't stop in cars and unfortunately bikers and walkers just cross and so i'm and i also understand what um craig said it, craig you're not wrong people are going to take the path of least resistance because we talked about it with our own roundabouts people want to cross right there at the street that is what they've been trained to do their whole life and to walk a number of feet away and cross in a different place is not gonna happen. They're just gonna ignore that. Um, so I'm really concerned about that trail and the crossing there. And so what else can be done? What are the other options if money were no object? And obviously we all know that that is an object, but you know, what would, I want us to make sure we're looking at this with this safety in mind versus, you know, first, versus making it all about the money? I'll try to answer that first, and Craig may have a good sure. answer too, but, um, you know, first of all, just keep in mind what's out there right now. Uh, there's there's very little east-west um, traffic volume um, at, that, at this location, and there's relatively little southbound to, to westbound or northbound to westbound movement in this area. And that's where the trail is. So the trail's on that right. volume side. Today, the trail is almost right on the intersection. In fact, it, it uses the crosswalk right at that intersection. So what the department is proposing is to shift that trail further to the west to provide more visibility and more um, um, clarity of expectations for motorists and for, and for pedestrians and bicyclists in that area. There is a stop control uh, at Florida Avenue for the trail users. And as you know, that, that's not often um, yeah. uh, followed. 
so I think by moving it <laughs> to the west, you're actually making it a lot safer. And the um, the other point I want to make about that is that um, at that location uh, where you're 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 talking about the path of least resistance uh, today, people would still have to walk up to the flashing beacon, which is not right at that intersection to provide control. And I don't think that's going to get shifted too far from where it is today. Um, nobody's going to cross right in the middle of the roadway, and there's not a safe crossing on the south side today. So this roundabout would actually create a safe crossing that doesn't exist. Okay. I'm not worried about the trail personally, just because uh, it's, it's, um, it's not crossing a four lane road like Skinner, for instance, mm -hmm. it's crossing a two lane, very low volume road. And there's just not that much right turn or left turn traffic in and out of Florida Avenue from Alt 19. And I don't foresee that really ever happening because there's not really development potential to the West. Okay, and then finally, <clears throat> I mean, the elephant in the room though, I think is that we've had these public meetings and we still have a majority that don't want it. So how do we move forward with the project when you have a majority of people that don't want it? That, that's what I, I need to ask. The one thing that uh, has come up, uh, and this is every meeting I've been to, um, it's either um, one meeting, there's a lot of people opposed, the next meeting, there's a lot of people in favor. It's been about 50-50 for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. And even Craig's data that he showed was just a, a very slight uh, level of opposition. We had a forum at the Palm Harbor Library and there were some very vocal opponents, but then there were also some very fo vocal uh, proponents. And, you know, um, there's no fail safe transportation solution. Uh, there's always some level of risk in anything you do. And this is just new and it's different, but everybody generally acknowledges that this part of the um, stretch of roadway needs something. Uh, it, it's, it's got higher speeds. There is a speeding issue. A lot of folks would like to see a signal at Nebraska. The reason we're shying away from the signal in Nebraska, first of all, it's not that direct connection where people want to go. And secondly, the, um, uh, the issue uh, with Nebraska uh, is that having a signal will actually increase delay on Alt-19 substantially more than roundabout though. So we're there, trying to find a balanced solution here. And there are other options. There's this is going to be a silly question, but there isn't another option really other than a signal or, or a roundabout, right? I mean, because you can't build an overpass there. That's not going to happen. Uh, no, I don't think that's the wise solution for that. I mean, it's really yeah. the signal at Nebraska is the only other option that could work. And that's just not as consistent. Well, it's not consistent with the Palm Harbor Master Plan, which was really the land use framework that we used as our basis for asking you to put this on the party list for, for design. Okay, those are the only questions I have. I might have some comments later, but those are the only questions I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I'd just like to respond um, to the question about the distance. Uh, so right now the existing driveway is around 46 feet from uh, Florida Avenue. And with a roundabout, it'll push it up to around just, just a little over a little over 100 feet. Um, because, uh, so, so basically the, the south end of the, of the, of the existing, RFB is going to be the north end of the medians. Um, I hope that's. It, I mean, it's a lot easier to translate things via via image. And unfortunately, yeah, I just. I get you. Right me. I got you. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so, so we'll be moving about fifty feet to the north. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? Oh. Mayor I Bradbury. Thank you very much. Um, my one concern is we're getting the design concept, but all of the stuff isn't worked out yet. And I don't want to hinder those businesses along there by approving something that's going to take away from their business, i.e. the gas station. The concept plan is drawn one way with the driveway still closer to the intersection and there is a potential to move it uh, further north. 
and I'm very uncomfortable voting on something that could hinder that business until or unless we're there's a way for us to stipulate that that business driveway will be negotiated or or what have you. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah yes, I totally agree um, with, with your concerns. And I, I, I like I, I had to have a discussion uh, with our, with our right away group group also because I, I wasn't too happy about all the negotiation and you know work we put into um, coming to agreement uh, with, with that property owner and, and then only to have something else um, show up in the plans. Um, but but unfortunately, th th this is just kind of like the legal process that that would have to go through. Um, and and the reason being is that um, b b because we are impacting their their right of way as part of um, the the damage that 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 we're doing to them, uh, but by impacting their their right of right by their right of way, uh, that adjusted driveway would be part of the healing, uh, for lack of a better term, part of the healing package um, that's put forward. So, so it'll be yet yes, it'll be there'll be some uh, financial resources given uh, because of the impacts of the right of way, and then also there's also going to be some design changes. Um, but, but what I can attest to you, we, we are fully on board. Uh, with going through that modified driveway, we have no intention whatsoever um, to not do that. Uh, the, 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 there isn't any design or, the, you know, the construction savings we'll have by reversing on our decision will be minimal, um, but minimal. Um, and, and 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 we know it's going to cause a lot of public outcry. So, so, so I just want to, I mean, I, I wish we really could pull it, put it in the solid plans right now. But again, those coordinations are kind of a little bit out of my hand, but we have every intention of, of moving that driveway to the north. If I could and, just uh, before I forget, I also want to commend uh, commend you on redesigning the driveway to the south on that property, as well as redesigning the trail further to the west, which I think will um, be more beneficial as far as safety, because it's not right in the line of fire as soon as you come around the corner, there's a little bit of a distance. Um, and I hope you guys utilize the uh, flashes as much as possible as well to give all the motorists, as well as the crossers, ample opportunity to use those and to observe them. Thank you. Like so, thank you. Quick, if I may, um, just to be real clear, this item is next on your agenda, not as a standalone item, but as part of the transportation improvement program. So um, the department has identified funding for construction in FY 2122 uh, for this roundabout. So we have a year to go before we would do construction. So the design process can play out. All we're asking you to do today at the next agenda item is approve uh, this five-year transportation improvement program. Uh, and this will be the first time the roundabout shows up in the TIP as a construction project. It's shown up previously as a design project and this will be the first time as a construction project. Commissioner Long. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would just like to say that this issue has been talked about for years. And back when Commissioner Latvala was on the county commission, we were talking about it then. I know that uh, Commissioner Eggers and myself were at a public hearing that they had up in Palm Harbor on this issue. And I would like to see us move forward and start working towards a solution because no matter what you come up with, there are going to be people that just want to oppose it. But at the meeting that we were both at, overwhelmingly people really understood that this was about change this was about making progress this was about you know doing something for the community that was needed and necessary and at some point you have to stop talking and just move forward with a decision so i'd like to see us move to the next agenda item mr chair and move on thank you okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Is there anybody else that had any uh, questions before we uh, move on? Yeah, I just, you know, I, I would just say this, that um, I've, I've spent well, a lot of time just walking that area, kind of 
between Georgia to the, this one block to the south of Florida Avenue. Florida Avenue is really the entrance to the downtown Palm Harbor up to Nebraska. And, and if you walk it, you feel the excess speeds that are going on through there. And we really just, it, for me, it's, it, it's leading as a public safety thing. It, we got to slow the traffic. There's a lot of, 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 of tr uh, cars uh, coming onto Alt 19 from different directions, from the retail places, the businesses, et cetera. They come in at angles, they go off at angles. Um, there's just a lot of activity there. So for me, the primary thought is that we just have to slow the traffic. Don't have to stop the traffic, just slow it down. I think coming, I think I heard, um, Craig, you all say once before that, uh, coming out of this or into or out of the speed limit, out of the roundabout is about somewhere around 15 miles an hour, 10 to 15 miles an hour. I can't remember. Could you comment yeah. on that? Yeah. 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 So we, so we design them. So, so the max speed is around 25 miles an hour. And, um, yeah. but, but, but if you drive it at 25 miles an hour, it, it actually feels, it feels a little bit um, less comfortable. Uh, so the, so yeah, it, it, you know, each vehicle is a little bit different. So, so as you as you yield and then you pull off, um, yeah, the, yeah, the speeds could vary between fifteen and twenty five. Well, I, I will tell you that when you come into that area, you'll be slowing down a little more than twenty five. There's just there's just an awful lot going on there. So uh, I think it's I think it's a good plan that's been put forward. I don't I don't really have any other questions myself. I think we've talked about connectivity to the trail. We've moved the trail back away from the road. I think that's a good thing. We've tried to accommodate. Our emergency vehicles, if they have to get through there a little faster by going over the the, the, the flatter areas um, of the of, of the actual physical roundabout, um, I think it's a nice entryway. We are we are right now appealing. I think we've got a, a, an application into DOT or the state to do a golf cart crossing at Georgia, which is just that one block south there. Again, another another reason to kind of slow the traffic down in that area. So we'll be approving a golf cart usage on the east side of Alt 19. And to connect the two, we have to find a place. And that's right there in that zone that we're talking about. So I just think another reason just to bring the traffic down. Oh, God. Don't not have to stop necessarily unless somebody's crossing in front of you. But um, anyway, that's all I had to say. Um, any other questions or comments? And we'll move on to um, uh, item. We'll move on we to item. What comment, Commissioner Eggers? Excuse me. We need to get. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So sorry. So sorry. Absolutely. Go ahead. Thank you. If there are any members of the public wishing to address the board, please use the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. I see no members of the public wishing to speak on this issue. Okay. Thank you. I, I did reach out to a few folks that were vocally. Uh, kind of against us for a while back and just to let them know that we were meeting and we're, we're welcoming any comments. So uh, they, they, they were, some of them were aware of it, uh, if not even by the public uh, notification. Okay, well, we'll move on. Thank you for that, uh, Craig. Appreciate that presentation. I, we just wanted to pull it out, draw a little more attention to it. We'll move on to our, our adoption of the uh, 2021 and 2024-25 transportation improvement uh, package and um, I think Jared is going to do that presentation for us. Yes, yes one sir. note before Jared begins. Um, Jared's presentation involves most of the screen and for some of you, you might have the blocks of people's images on the right side of the screen. Depending on your setup, if you move your mouse, you see you can move it to a different view or if you um, have a computer, you are likely able to just click it and drag it as Jared goes through his presentation, you might want to do that um, so that you can see the entire thing. Thank you, Jared, it's all yours. Great, thank you for that, Sarah and uh, Commissioner Eggers. Um, so uh, as stated, I'll be going through the forward panelist adoption of the FY 2020-21 through 24-25 transportation improvement program with you all today. <clears throat> Uh oh.
Not sure why that happened anyway. Okay, uh, so as some of you may know, every year Ford Pinellas is required by federal law to update our transportation improvement program, uh, which is, or TIP, which is a document detailing upcoming transportation projects in coordination with state and public transportation providers and agencies. Uh, in the TIP, we document and include a number of transportation projects, uh, including those from our various local governments, from PSTA, from our various local airports, and from our various local ports. In addition to this, uh, the TIP is directly coordinated with our Long Range Transportation Plan, or LRTP, and that once projects that are identified uh, within the Long Range Transportation Plan, once funding is available for them within the time window covered by the current fiscal year TIP, those projects then can, can then be moved into the TIP document itself. That's why throughout the uh, work program, you'll see a number of references to our LRTP objectives. And so what we are actually looking to do today as part of our annual adoption of the TIP is to include uh, the Florida Department of Transportation's five-year work program into our current FY 2020-21 through 24-25 transportation improvement program. So here's just a visual illustration of that. And in addition to this, a number of supplemental materials that we include uh, not only in your packets, but in the transportation improvement doc program document itself uh, are a number of maps that detail where some of the project highlights are throughout Pinellas County, as well as various summary tables that document the project number uh, for particular projects, uh, a brief description of the location, uh, a brief des description of the project itself, as well as the current status of the project. And I should just note, uh, note that if you are taking a look at any of these tables, any of the projects that are grayed out just indicates a change from last year's annual update to our transportation improvement program. Uh, so now I'm just going to move through some of the uh, project highlights. This isn't, this doesn't encompass every project in the TIP. Again, just some of the highlights. And I should also note that many of these projects were presented to you by the Florida, or presented to you by the Florida Department of Transportation uh, back in November, I believe, and there have not been any changes since then. So we'll just move on to some of the roadway projects. So here at number one, you can see the US-19 from north of State Road 580 or Main Street to Northside Drive. This is the Republic Drive overpass. This is an add lanes and reconstruct. Preliminary engineering is underway, right-of-way is underway, and construction is scheduled for the 2021-22 timeframe. At number two, we have the US-19 from Northside Drive to north of County Road 95. This is the Curlew Road interchange. Uh, this is adding lanes, reconstruction, resurfacing, and new interchange. Uh, preliminary engineering is underway, and construction is scheduled for the 2021-22 timeframe. Here at number three, uh, we have the Gateway Expressway at US-19 to west of I-275. This is a new road construction, and we have design build underway. At number four, we have Gandhi Boulevard from 4th Street to west of Gandhi Bridge. This is add lanes and reconstruct, uh, and preliminary engineering has been deferred to the 2023-24 timeframe. Here at number five, we have Gandhi Boulevard from east of US-19 to east of I-275. This is add lanes and reconstruction from four to six lanes. The preliminary engineering is underway, the right-of-way un is underway, and the environmental is underway. At number six, we have the I-275 or Howard Franklin from north of 4th Street North to north of the Howard Franklin. Uh, this is a bridge replacement and add lanes, and the design build is currently underway. 
At number seven, we have I-275 from south of Gandhi Boulevard to north of 4th Street North. Uh, this is Interstate Express Lanes, and the design build is underway. At number eight, we have I-275 from 54th Avenue South to south of Roosevelt Velt Boulevard. This is Add Lanes and Reconstruct. Um, they have added right-of-way to 2021 through 23 timeframe, and design build is scheduled for the 2024 to 25 timeframe. Here at number nine, we had uh, US 19 from north of Nebraska Avenue to south of Timberland Road. Uh, these are interchanges at Alderman Road and Innisbrook Citrus Drive. Uh, this is add lanes, reconstruction, and new interchanges. Uh, preliminary engineering is underway, and right of way is scheduled for the 2025 26 timeframe. Here at number 10, we have US 19 from north of County Road 95 to south of Pine Ridge Way. These are interchanges at Tampa Road, Frontage Road. And the preliminary engineering is underway, and construction has been deferred uh, to the 2025 26 timeframe. Here at number 11, we have Alt US 19. Uh, Palm Harbor Boulevard at Florida Avenue. This is the roundabout that was presented on earlier to improve intersection safety. Uh, preliminary and en uh, engineering is underway and construction is scheduled for the 2021-22 timeframe. And at number 12, we have Gulf Boulevard from north of 36th Avenue to 131st Avenue. Uh, preliminary engineering is underway and construction is scheduled for the 2021 timeframe. At number 13, we have the Alt US 19 corridor study from Park Street North to Bel Air Road. Uh, and at number 14, we have the Alt US 19 corridor study 2 from Bel Air Road to Pinellas Pasco County line. Uh, and just a note on these projects uh, these studies have actually been completed, and the amounts listed in the TIP uh, serve merely as placeholders for when right of way and construction becomes available for the various segments of the project. Uh, and currently we are looking to advance those projects in the near future and we'll be adjusting the associated funding as required. So now I'm just gonna move on to some uh, bicycle and pedestrian project highlights. So at number one, we have the State Road 60 or Courtney Campbell pedestrian overpass from Courtney Campbell Trail to Bayshore Trail. Uh, preliminary engineering is underway and construction is scheduled for the 2023-24 timeframe. And at number two, we have the US 19 from south of Harn Boulevard to north of Harn Boulevard pedestrian overpass. Preliminary engineering is scheduled for the 2021-22 timeframe, and I believe construction, it's not listed on here, but construction is also scheduled for the 2022-23 uh, timeframe. Here at number three, we have the Pinellas Trail Loop Phase 3 from Almerton Road to Bel Air Road. But this is a bike path trail project, and construction is scheduled for the 2023-24 timeframe. At number four, we have the Pinellas Trail Loop Phase 4 from 126th Avenue North to Almerton Road. Again, bike path trail project. Preliminary engineering is scheduled for the 2021-22 timeframe, and construction is scheduled for the 23-24 timeframe. So now I'll just go over some Complete Streets projects highlights. At number one, we have US 19 or 34th Street from 54th Avenue South to 22nd Avenue North. Uh, this was a complete streets grant project, uh, bat lane project in the Skyway Marina District. Uh, we have preliminary engineering underway and construction scheduled for the 21-22 timeframe. At number two, we have Rosary Road from Missouri Avenue to Eagle Lake Park. Uh, again, another Complete Streets grant project and construction is scheduled for the 2023-24 timeframe. And finally, we have St. Petersburg Drive East from south of Bayview Boulevard to Dartmouth Avenue, another Complete Streets grant project and construction is scheduled for the 2023-24 timeframe. Now I'll just move on to our transit project highlights. We have the PSTA FHWA Surface Transportation Program. This is a bus replacement and capital funding. 
uh, for up to one and a half million of capital funding for PSTA bus replacements scheduled in the 2024-25 timeframe. <clears throat> Here is a brief uh, overview of the expenditures covered throughout the 2020 through 2025 timeframe. Here you can hear see planned expenditures compared with our current revenue projections for this uh, current TIP. And in terms of next steps, here you can see where we are in the process. And if approved by you all today, uh, the state progr work program will be incorporated into our FY 2020 through 21 through 24, 25 TIP, which is required for transportation projects in Pinellas County to receive funding. In addition to this, I would be remiss not to mention that we do have an interactive TIP that is now hosted on our website. It can be found by clicking the link here on our website's homepage. Uh, and the interactive TIP documents a number of projects throughout Pinellas County separated by ATMS, ITS, roadways, bike ped, all county projects and all state projects and all projects. Uh, this has currently been updated and uh, now BTS is just reviewing uh, the, the projects on the back end. So the current projects for this TIP uh, should be available online uh, at the latest by Friday afternoon. So with that, I would be happy to take any questions any of you um, may have. Uh, and we also have representatives for the Florida Department of Transportation here in case there's anything that I can't answer for you today. Yeah, I, I'd like, before we get into the uh, questions from our board, I just was hoping that um, I'd ask David, uh, Secretary Gwynn, if he could uh, maybe just speak a little bit to kind of what, what's going on up in Tallahassee, what's the adjustments have been, just a little bit of what's going on in the, in the world of FDOT before we get into uh, specific questions. Welcome again. Thank you, glad to be here. Um, yeah, so we are not really exactly sure what's gonna happen yet with our budget. As most of you probably know, the, the legislature has not officially delivered our, uh, the, the budget, the proposed budget to the governor but he does have 14 days to act upon it once he gets it. And so we're expecting that he'll probably receive it fairly soon and he'll have some tough choices to make. But um, so far we have not made any significant changes to our program. Um, we tend to try and carry reserves so that we can absorb, uh, you know, certain, certain hits uh, if, if, if a cash flow situation occurs. But certainly this is a bigger cash flow hit than we would normally plan for. So uh, we have moved a couple of projects in the district, none in Pinellas County from the first quarter, basically from July, August, September into the second quarter, October, November, December. Um, once we find out a little bit better what the revenue estimating conference projects our revenues to be uh, and they'll do that in august we'll probably have to come back and revisit but at this point we're really not sure what they're going to come back with and tell us that we should plan to have for revenues we do know that um, our traffic volumes for a good portion of, of march and april and, and part of may were down as much as 50 to 60 percent uh, traffic volumes, and that's probably a good indicator of the gas tax revenue uh, implications. Uh, there have been decreases in toll revenue, about the same amount, uh, perhaps even a little more. And then with our other sources of revenue related to registration, title, tags, uh, rental cars, they've been down as well. So I can't promise you that uh, there won't be any changes, but we're optimistic that there's not going to be significant changes. Um, we don't think there'll be any um, issues with the federal funding. We think all the projects that have the federal money on it, we should be uh, good. There may be some modifications we have to make with state money, but uh, I would say that if we do make changes, uh, you're probably going to th see things move out a little bit, everything move out a little bit as opposed to major deletions or, or deferrals. But um, we'll deal with that when we find out what the final numbers are. Um, I don't think it's as dire as maybe some folks uh, have painted it to be because of the way that we manage our, our trust fund, but uh, it's still probably going to be a hit. 
Okay, well, thank you, uh, Secretary. I don't know if uh, anybody had uh, maybe one or two questions for Secretary uh, Gwynn, but um, um, if you do, kind of raise your hands, because I, I know the hands were starting to raise about the specific program, but if anybody has anything for Secretary, um, raise your hand and we'll see, we'll, we'll get those dealt with. I'm not, I just, I'm flicking through her. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Sarah, are you seeing anybody? No. Nope. Okay. Well, we're going to let you off easy today, Secretary. All right. Um, thank you. You'll be here for Jared's backup on uh, any questions for him. <laughs> All right. We will. Thanks. Okay, Sarah, you can get to the questions that were. Sure. Commissioner Steele, you are first. Thank you. I was worried that you didn't see my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, naturally, you know, I want to ask about the US 19 um, projects and I know the um, it mentions the one at Alderman, a new interchange, and a new interchange at Tampa Road. Um, I know a few months ago we were presented with alternative um, ideas for those interchanges, and I just wanted to know um, how we were proceeding. Sure, I was going to um, cover that uh, later on in the agenda, but I'll mention it now. Um, we've made no decisions uh, and have given no recommendations to the Department of Transportation about those alternative interchanges. So the plan is to still build those interchanges uh, unless we direct the department differently. What we are hoping to do is to schedule a workshop uh, with the board uh, in January, February timeframe to bring back uh, not only the alternatives that were presented back in February, but there was a second phase of that presentation that addressed the, the in-between um, access management and, and other issues between the um, interchanges. And we also have uh, the Gandhi interchange. We have the 34 Street South um, uh, lane modification that's happening down in the Skyway Marina District area. And then we have the frontage roads study. And I'd like to bring all that back together to have a, a, a Little more drawn out, uh, more thoughtful conversation. Uh, and uh, my understanding is Pinellas County is also initiating um, a US 19 land use and transportation study in the northern part uh, as well. So uh, we're hopeful that by January, February, they'll be done at least with phase one of that effort. So um, for now, um, we're, we're proceeding as originally intended to build those interchanges. Okay, excellent. Um, is there any way I know that I had talked about using a an interim solution at Gandhi at 19? Are we looking at that at all? In other words, adding a, um, I was actually talking with somebody about it yesterday and maybe, you know, there's three general purpose lanes and one left turn lane going um, eastbound on the Gandhi. Um, any thought of, taking one of those lanes, at least in the interim, and having two left turn lanes onto Gandhi? I did raise that issue with the department's project manager, and um, she said they would look into it. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't have an update today, but we'll follow up and, and see where things are and, and see if there's a possibility of a kind of an interim improvement. The right-of-way costs, as you may remember, are incredibly high for that location, like 70 million or 80 million alone just for right of way. I think it would certainly be worth uh, looking at, at least as an interim solution to um, alleviate the congestion there. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor you Butchowski, you have in, thank you, Karen. Karen, thank you for that mention. Go ahead, Sarah. Mayor Bujalski, you have your hand raised. I did. Um, could you just go back to the uh, Alt 19 um, corridor improvements that we're doing? Um, you mentioned, it sounded like you mentioned they were moving up earlier, but I couldn't catch it. Let me, let me try and address that. Uh, and I don't know if we can show Jared's screen where that is. The Alt-19 quarter study was something that we requested the department move up uh, in the schedule, and that study has been completed. Um, what we're um, really now working on is the Curlew Road Alt-19 intersection uh, mm -hmm. in Dunedin, 
That's yep. one project that we're um, getting some feedback from the department on some operational improvements in that area to accom better accommodate all the trail users, all the pedestrians, and the motor vehicles because there is a congestion problem at that location. At this point, we have not um, instructed the department, nor have we gotten a request from the department to move forward with any of the other uh, concepts coming out of that Alt-19 quarter study, such as the uh, additional roundabouts and things like that that you saw in the downtown Dunedin area. Um, so um, we'll follow up with the department's project manager and kind of see where they want to go. Um, but mostly we're focusing on these lower cost uh, safety and operational improvements. Um, for instance, on Edgewater Drive, the um, narrowing of the lane widths uh, a little bit to accommodate a wider sidewalk is something that they recommended, as well as a number of mid-block crossings. And those would be able to be funded easily with the amount of money that's, or the placeholder that's identified in the work programs. Those are low cost improvements. So yeah, I was um, particularly interested, well, I was interested in everything you just mentioned, but I was also particularly interested in the um, Main Street uh, and Alt 19 from Edgewater to Bayshore intersection. You mentioned roundabouts, but there were also other types of intersections that they looked at. And, and you said that the study was complete, but we never got back, to my knowledge anyway, what the recommendation at that intersection was and how that might be moving forward. So, so the, the process of this, this was a planning study. So the next step would be to move into a preliminary engineering um, phase to really work out some of the details of those concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will follow up with the project manager and come back with a summary of that for you. Also uh, for Commissioner Donovan's note, uh, there was a project to uh, expand the width of the bridge over the Enclote River uh, on Alt-19 uh, to improve accessibility and safety uh, over that bridge because I don't think there's sidewalks. Um, so that's something that we were looking at as well. So, we'll bring back a summary of all those recommendations. So it talks about PE, or that's the preliminary engineering you're talking about? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it talks about that for 2021, 2022. And then I guess construction or whatever for 2023. That Depends on what, what comes out of the preliminary engineering. Like I said, some of the uh, recommendations such as a mid-block crossing or, or, or um, narrowing of the lanes and adding the sidewalk could go with a resurfacing project. So that's kind of what we need to follow up with the department on is when are those things going to be scheduled? For now, all we have is the preliminary engineering Program. Okay, so if you can give me that information on that downtown intersection, that'd be great. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, it's just a, a question, maybe um, you all, you know, FDOT folks may have some thoughts on it. I know we, we've talked about it. I know we've talked about it at the county. And I'm thinking of the uh, trail um, crossings over um, multiple lane roads and what the what the, the feeling is of behind you know what FDOT's position and thoughts are about crossing you know two lane roads four lane roads six lane roads at grade level or or raised because we have several places throughout the county that we've already crossed major roads and we have some others that are coming up that need to be addressed so just maybe a, a comment on that please uh, sure. Well, um, we are, through our active transportation plan, have identified a number of grade separations of trail crossings in the county. What we have not done, to my knowledge, Rodney, correct me if I'm wrong, is specifically identified projects. Um, what we have identified is a, a, a number that we can afford um, over the course of the next you know, couple of decades. And we're in the process of working with the county to prioritize those. Um, Rodney, is that about accurate? Uh, that's a, generally uh, it. I would just add that uh, we, we do have a prioritized list of um, trail uh, overpasses, and uh, we have been working with the local governments to confirm uh, their uh, ability to support those projects and 
uh, you will start to see those projects show up on our multimodal party, uh, project party list uh, in the future. Okay. Um, all right. It, it, has that investigation gotten into talking to the owners of the right uh, of the right of ways that we're using about you know takeoff and landings in their in their right of way? Is that like like uh, no? Uh, no, Commissioner, we do not have uh, specific conversations with property owners, but what uh, the engineering team did try to do was uh, conceptually uh, analyze if the infrastructure could be fit in the existing right of way. And so we did our best to uh, choose locations where there'd be little to no right of way impacts. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd be interested in seeing that list that you guys are working on so I can make sure certain ones that uh, are being looked at. So, uh, okay. Well, I, I don't see any other questions from the board. Do you see anybody else, Sarah? No board members. Okay. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do a check with the public to see if we have anybody that would like to weigh in. Anyone wishing to address the board, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. Commissioner Eggers, I see no members of the public wishing to speak on this item. Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll close that public portion and we'll look for a, a motion and a second to approve this uh, uh, the TIP program, please. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Welch, seconded by Commissioner Donovan. And we'll do a roll call, please. Mayor Bujowski. Aye. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer? Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton? Aye. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Council Member Rice? Yes. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Council Member Gabbard? Yes. Commissioner Seal? Yes. Mayor Bradbury? Aye. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Eggers? Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you, um, uh, uh, Jared. Really appreciate that presentation. Secretary Gwynn, thank you again for being here and weighing in a little bit, uh, trying to give us an idea of what's coming. I know it's going to be an interesting month ahead um, as we look at that. Uh, some of the tough decisions that, that have to be made. So we'll go ahead and move into um, our presentations and start with PSTA and that'll be Commissioner Long, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Commissioner Long has some very exciting news to share with everyone if you're not already aware. We actually got the money from the feds for the Central Avenue BRT line. Yes, that is excellent. The president and the Federal Transit Administration announced the federal allocation for the capital investment grant program, and they've given PSTA and the Central Avenue BRT $21.8 million for the construction and vehicles needed to run the service. So as you all know, and you've heard me talk about it before, that is the catalyst for the beginning of the 41-mile a transit system that is the spine for our real regional connectivity. And we couldn't be more excited and happy, especially right now with the economic uh, jobs and employment the way it is, this should be a really good boost. So good job, PSTA and all of the leaders that work. Thank you, Darden Rice, because I know you were with us on many of our trips. And um, it, it's just been an awfully long time coming. And I couldn't be more grateful for the relationship that we've built with Jane Williams, who's the administrator for the FTA, because I told her on the phone last Friday, you know, this is just the beginning. We're going to be coming back for phase two and phase three. And she laughed. And so I'm pretty uh, proud to be able to share with you that the construction 
of that BRT Central Avenue line is due to com be completed in um, 20, hold on just a second, I'm gonna give you, in 2022. And I also wanna say a big thanks to Pinellas County government who helped us be able to accommodate the turnaround of the buses down on St. Pete Beach. We also were informed by Senator Rubio's office that we've received $720,000 from the FTA on the uh, transit, the TOD pilot program, which is um, also along the Central Avenue corridor. And this, the funding will be used to develop the design guide, guidelines and implementation of a business assistance program. So the city and the city of, of the forward Pinellas, all of us and the city of St. Petersburg have joined forces with PSTA to match both grants with the dedication of staff time and in-kind resources. Once again, with partnerships, you do more. We have been doing very well with our COVID response to, to, the, um, to the employees at PSTA. I'm happy to report none of them have gotten sick, including the bus drivers. So what we're doing must be working. And you all know, I think, because some of you might have been there at the press release a few days ago for the new um, charging station, the induction center for our buses, which are going to help reduce the carbon footprint in our community. All is good. It's a bright future for our, for our county and for the region. Thank you, FDOT, for all of your help as well. We appreciate the partnership. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that report. A, a slightly excited uh, version. Thank you so much. Appreciate that effort and congratulations to PSTA. Thank um, you. Too bad you're Karen, not on the board anymore. Yeah, well, see, I, I leave and you guys get all these successes. That's what it was all about, see? Um, Karen, you have a T-Barda report. I do. We had a meeting on May the 15th. Uh, we approved a line of credit if needed up to 300,000 just because of the way our cash flow works. Um, we have an updated procurement manual, but um, more importantly, we had some presentations on innovative transit technology, which is the urban aerial gondolas, air taxis, and the Hyperloop. Um, I'd urge you to go to the T-BARTA website and take a look at the presentations. They all were interesting, um, with the exception of the um, aerial gondolas, the other two technologies um, are projected to take quite some time to get through testing, research, and regulatory process. Um, the, uh, Scott Pringle presented the regional rapid transit design alternative with the capital cost. It's expected at our next meeting on June 22nd that we will um, decide on two to three alternatives to continue the study. And so um, that should be interesting. And finally, we had a presentation on the Flamingo card, which is a smart card that allows people to scan their card for mobile application to board buses in Hernando, Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Sarasota counties. So um, that's a great project, a long time in coming, and should make um, it much nicer for our riders to um, use the smart card across the region. Um, that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, Commissioner Eggers, Council Member Rice had her hand raised. Okay. Yep, if I looked at the bottom of the screen, I would see that. Sorry, thank you, Sarah. Sure, that's okay. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I raised my hand earlier to say something after uh, Commissioner Long's PSTA report. And I just briefly wanted to say that, you know, when we have a success like this, uh, there's just so many people who have been a part of it, but uh, Commissioner Long deserves a lot of credit too. As you all know, especially as she took over chairing PSTA, she's certainly no shrinking violet. And it, it was great to go with <laughs> next to uh, DC and Tallahassee. 
as we uh, continue to build on and develop important relationships with transportation officials. And so I just really wanted to uh, be sure to thank Commissioner Long. And you may have already mentioned uh, Brad Miller and Cassandra Borchers and Heather Sobush. And um, I know I'm forgetting a bunch of PSTA names, but um, just it's been, you just can't say enough about what great teamwork this is and what this means for our region. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Chair. Yes, uh, Commissioner Long. I, th I, th I think it's also important to recognize the work and the enthusiasm that we had from Rick Homan at the Tampa Bay Partnership because it spoke to the regional um, support of this plan and how needed it was to jumpstart our regional connections. So that helped us out a lot too. Thank you, Commissioner. You, you, you can't welcome. thank enough people, that's for sure. And, Amen uh, since, to that. Since Commissioner Long is here at the office and I'm here at the office, you all heard the fire truck go by just a minute ago. So sorry sorry about that. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Mayor, Mayor Bajowski. Bajowski? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to thank the current PSTA board for all of their hard work. I know our vice mayor is on, on the board currently, and uh, thank you for everything that you've done. And I'd like to thank all the past PSTA boards that have worked on this thing. It has gone on a long time. So thank you, everybody, for your efforts. Anybody else for either the TBARDA or the PSTA? Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to um, our um, our F F FY 2021 uh, Pinellas Planning Council budget. And uh, Rodney Chapman, you are going to lead us off there. Thank you. All right, oh, thank you. Way, but to, uh, Rodney, just a second. Just make sure, again, like we've been doing, let Rodney get through the report, and then we'll start weighing in on questions. Uh, just another reminder. Sorry about that, Rodney. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you know, Fort Pinellas was created by merging the Pinellas County MPO and the Pinellas Planning Council into one integrated land use transportation planning agency for Pinellas County. While we are one agency, we still must maintain a separate budget process for the MPO and PPC. This board took action and approved the MPO's work program and budget at the May meeting, and I will spend the next few minutes presenting the preliminary budget for the PPC for fiscal year 2021. This discussion is for informational purposes only, and we will bring back the final fiscal year 2021 budget and millage rate for your recommendation at next month's meeting. As a dependent special district of the Board of County Commissioners, we work closely with the Office of Management and Budget to estimate future revenues, expenses, and develop other financial projections. What you see here is the latest information available but the figures may change as we often receive new estimates from OMB. For fiscal year 2021, property tax revenues are estimated to increase by about 4.2% and our operating expenses are projected to decrease uh, by about 16%. In past years, we had a large unassigned fund balance and the board directed us to reduce that amount. And we have followed this directive by dedicating funds to key initiatives such as the planning and placemaking grant pilot program, the Active Transportation Plan, the Gateway Master Plan, and Safe Trees Pinellas. We plan to use about $260,000 from the unassigned fund balance to balance next year's budget, which will leave us <clears throat> with about $116,000 in the fund, which meets the board reserve policy that was set many years ago. This chart shows the projected tax revenues from for the PPC from 2021 through 2026 in blue. The smaller light green bars show the projected increase in revenue from the previous fiscal year. And this figure ranges from about $57,000 to $67,000 over this time period. Most of the PPC expenditures slightly change from year to year and are in the tens or tens of thousands of dollars, except for contractual support services, intergovernmental service charges, and contingency. For fiscal year 2021, 
We plan to spend about $170,000 on the final year of the planning and placemaking uh, grant pilot program, provide matching local funds for the Federal Transit Administration Section 5305 grant that the MPO receives, and fund a fellowship position for one student to work with us from USF's Urban and Regional Planning Program. We also plan to budget a little over $400,000 to cover the charges for services from Pinellas County and put money in our rainy day fund. The special projects that our staff completes in collaboration with our local government partners will be done in-house and we hope to receive about $10,000 in work, or excuse me, in revenue for this type of work. You may recall that we discussed a potential millage increase at the January work session. However, in light of the current coronavirus pandemic, we have decided not to pursue the millage increase for fiscal year 2021. Uh, we also prepare a draft work plan for the PPC in concert with the budget. This work plan is divided into two main tasks, which are ongoing assignments and one-time projects. The ongoing assignments include activities associated with the administration of the countywide plan, such as our monthly processing of land use map amendments and various forms of technical assistance that we provide to our local governments that you may not always see. Our one-time projects are a combination of data analytics projects where we plan to assess land use and transportation trends and conditions in four areas of the county. Our knowledge exchange series program where we plan to develop a new approach to measuring the multimodal impacts of land use map amendments, assess whether changes are needed in how we regulate assisting living facilities and other topics that are yet to be determined. Uh, lastly, our staff will be working with the city of Gulfport on a building massing study in their waterfront redevelopment area. We will continue to partner with the county on developing a countywide housing strategy, continue our work with PSTA, the city of St. Pete and the city of South Pasadena on the Central Avenue BRT TOD plan. And we'll also develop a guide for citizens that can be used to explain who we are, what we do and how they can engage in our processes. Finally, I'd like to remind our board that we continue to operate the agency in a very fiscally responsible manner. Our millage rate is at 9% of the cap and has been for a number of years. However, the coming years will require another conversation about our growing role in countywide issues and the resources that are required to meet that need. Uh, that concludes my remarks and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you, Rodney. Um, yeah, we, we are not going to take any action today, but certainly uh, any questions that you may have of Rodney are, are more than welcome. So please, this would be a good time for that. Wow, Rodney, you did a great job. I'm not seeing, <laughs> any, I'm not seeing any hands. So, no hands, okay. Um, I think right. we will think a lot about yeah. the roundabout. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a great job, Rodney, putting that together. I think you laid it out pretty clearly. So uh, I know we're going to have, you know, some challenges down the road here, but I think, you know, in light of what's gone on this year, I think it was a very well thought through budget and your recommendations, I think, are well noted. So thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to move on to Sarah to give us an update on the Safe Street Pinellas. Before that, we need to do citizens wishing to speak. Oh, on an item that we're not taking action on? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any citizens wishing to speak or address the board on the um, Pinellas Planning Council budget, please use the raise hand feature or hit star nine on the phone. Seeing none, we can um, conclude the citizen comment section of that item. Okay, thanks for keeping me straight there, Sarah. Uh, we'll move on to 7D. As I said, Safe Streets update. Uh, we're gonna actually have Sarah do the update. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, we're gonna provide an update on where we are with Safe Streets Pinellas. Reminder, Safe Streets Pinellas is a Vision Zero effort. Vision Zero is a transportation safety philosophy that is a little different from some of the traditional safety philosophies that essentially says it's not okay for anyone to lose their life on our roadways. 
This slide shows the core elements of Vision Zero communities. It uh, is put together by the Vision Zero network in collaboration with other agencies and provides a range of measures and strategies that uh, make up what a, a safe streets or Vision Zero effort should include. Here's a little bit of information. We have our consultant on board and they've done an analysis of the collision data. And they look at it in a number of ways. One of them is to look at the collisions that are happening with automobiles, bicycles, pedestrians, and motorcycles. And to look at what all collisions are compared to KSI or killed or severely injured collisions. And then to look at fatal collisions. And this helps get a bigger picture and understanding of the differences. So in all collisions, they're dominated by automobile collisions primarily. But as we get into KSI and fatal collisions, that shifts to non-motorized users and motorcycles. One of the reasons we're bringing this to today besides an update is to give you a heads up that we're going to be doing an initial outreach push later this month. It will be an eight week effort we're taking what we had planned for the summit in March that was postponed and we're making it virtual. So some of the features to look for are an interactive story map, an interactive web map where the community can put areas that they see concerns. We'll have quizzes and other interactive opportunities. We're also looking for volunteers. If any of the board members are interested, we are going to be doing a series of videos as part of this eight week effort and beyond. So please let me know or you can let Amy Elmore know if you're interested. We'd love to have you do a video with us. Here is a preview of what the story map generally will look like. As people scroll through, they'll see different kinds of information where collisions are happening, where they're broken out by mode to give people an idea of what we're seeing with the data. Sorry about that. And then we will have this interactive map because we know that the data only tells us so much. And people can tell us about near misses or other areas where they see concerns. And we're really hoping to get the public's help in finding areas where they feel unsafe. We have previewed this with our ambassadors and our task force members, and we're using their expertise and guidance to help us as we develop the plan. But we're really hoping that this public outreach push will help us learn more about what the community thinks so we can tailor our approach that best fits Pinellas County and the different areas within Pinellas County. Our ultimate goal is to develop an action plan that we will implement once it's adopted. And with that, I'll take any questions you have on Safe Streets Pinellas. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that. Go ahead. I see um, Mayor Kennedy has a question. Yes, um, all of this information that you are giving us about um, the public outreach, the maps, and the data, would you have it in a simplified form that we could put on our websites in our city? Yes, we will have that and we'll send it out to you. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, I think that's we always do try to reach out to our 24 partners for sure, our 25 partners. So, anybody else? Okay, well, there's a lot more to come on this. So, looking forward to how things unfold over the next few months. Thank, Thank you. you we need to ask for public comment on this item as well. If there are any members of the public that wish to address the board, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. And Commissioner Eggers, I don't see anyone. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, okay, we're gonna move on to um, executive director's annual performance evaluation. And um, I'm gonna just kind of say a few things uh, as we get into it and then open it up to the board for any discussion uh, at the end, we'll, there'll be, you know, kind of a, we'll summarize things and then uh, look for a motion at that point. And we'll define what that is at, uh, then. But, you know, I think overall, I would say based on um, board members input and uh, certainly the every two year climate survey that we did, the last one we did was 2018. And uh, of course, we did it this year. Um, the board continues to be extremely um, 
happy with the work that WIT does. I personally uh, can't say enough good things about the work that WIT does for uh, for the organization, but uh, obviously far greater than that uh, as he reaches the Pinellas County, all the member governments here in, in Pinellas County, but also how he reaches out regionally. Um, it's really in, huge as we continue to work with uh, Hillsborough County and, 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 and surrounding counties. Um, he's got uh, a great reputation among those partners as well. So I just think he's done a great job. The board continues to reflect that um, and the, and the staff, the climate assessment survey in the last two years has certainly shown improvement. I would say that um, if you looked at the major areas and uh, uh, encourages teamwork, innovation, problem solving, instills confidence, promotes initiative through support, those areas under the climate survey were both uh, in, shown improvement. Again, not they were bad before, but certainly showed improvement in the last two years. Uh, uh, responsiveness to issues and follow through showed the largest improvement. And again, not that it was bad before, but even more improvement in the last a couple of years. Um, and the communication effectively and efficiently with staff has shown some improvement. That's an area that we continue, that I know he continues to work on. Um, and there's been not, not through lack of an effort, but also through an organizational change uh, within the, the, the organization to try to give a little bit more access to staff, to upper management in the organization. So, uh, I, you know, again, I think overall, uh, WIT's done a good job. We, as, a, uh, as, an executive, as an executive team, we were the same, I guess, reflective, uh, was overall pleased the board about, with the board evaluations um, and certainly the climate surveys uh, from, our, from our staff members as well. We don't do those every year. We do them every other year. And I think it's important to continue to, to see how that team is, is, is responding to WIT's leadership. So um, all in all, it was a really, I think a, a good, solid, uh, excellent review. And, um, and with that, I will open it up to any comments or questions that, that, uh, that you all as board members um, and people who work closely with them would have. Anybody? I see Commissioner, or um, sorry, Vice Mayor Sofer. Um, I just wanted to really thank Witt for his guidance through this process for me. I've learned a lot from him and his knowledge and his, um, he's like a sponge. He wants to learn so much more and it's really enlightening and fun to watch and uh, it's contagious at the same time. So. Uh, thank you for sharing your passion with me, Wit, and uh, I will look forward to seeing, no pun intended, you grow with this um, since I'm going to be coming off this board this year, but uh, it really has truly been a pleasure, and I really do appreciate everything you do for all of us board members. Um, it's a pleasure. Well said, uh, Commissioner Sofer. Uh, next, I see Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, for the record, did not submit a performance evaluation just because I've been on the board for a little over a month. So I didn't think that was fair to anybody. Uh, but I did just want to make a note that Witt has been so professional and helpful and getting me caught up to speed. And him and all staff has been really great to work with so far. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Next is Mayor Bujalski. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I did want to apologize because I also did not submit. Um, my bad. Just, we're all busy. and it, it, Anyway, I, I'm sorry for that. But I did want to say that um, um, Wit is always extremely responsive, um, I think, to all of us. But I can only speak for myself. Um, I know there's been a no number of traffic issues in, in my neck of the woods in North County that I call out to what um, often I think he talks to me a lot and I, I really appreciate that because I think he has to focus on so many different things he's got to focus on the region he's got to show focus on the county and then certain all 24 cities with their issues where there's where there are state roads and that type of thing moving forward he's always um, done really well at bringing all the um, parties to the table, if you will, 
And I appreciate that. I also think he had to come in. I was lucky enough to be a part of the group that recommended to hire him and vote to hire him. And he had to come into, you know, an organization uh, that had a long time leader and did things maybe a little bit differently than they do now. Um, and so he's had to work hard to um, promote the organization, improve the internal culture, um, you know, give training to his employees and, and, and provide vision. And so I appreciate all of those things as well. So thank you, Whit. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? Am I, is, um, I see no other board members with their hand raised. We do have members of the public wishing to speak on this. Okay, that's fine. I just, I, I wanted to add one other thing that I didn't mention, but um, as everybody knows, there was an effort to move a referendum forward this year. Um, uh, and and um, Witt was right, it was one of the leaders. So him along with Barry, uh, Burton and uh, and Brad Miller uh, worked together to try to, to to paint the picture for our residents so that it made really good down home sense and uh, and, and though we decided clearly this is not the year to do that uh, given what we're going through um, there was a lot of effort and his insight and his vision I think was really important and very impactful in some of those ongoing efforts so again thank you for that wit. Um, uh, we'll turn it back. Let's go to the public and hear what they might have to say. Thank you for that, Sarah. Thank you. Anyone wishing to address the board, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button or star nine on the phone. We have one person with their hand raised right now. Karen Mullins, I'm going to allow you to talk and ask you to unmute and you have three minutes. I thank you. I want to reiterate what uh, Julie had said about what he has been a wonderful culture change within our um, CAC. I can only speak on the MPO section of it. He has shown so much grace and diplomacy and has this, oh, just the talent to get everybody on board with what the vision is for forward Pinellas. So I want to thank him for being here for the last five years. And we look forward to the next 15 wit. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Thank you again. Thanks for your leadership on our advisory committee. Thanks, Karen. Anybody else? I see no other members of the public wishing to speak on this. Okay, well, at the executive committee, we, we, uh, we recommended that the board um, um, provide a 3% raise uh, commensurate with what others, the, the rest of the staff is getting. So um, if for some reason that changed, we would want to change his to be commensurate with whatever staff is getting anticipated to be 3%. So that was the recommendation from the executive board uh, to, the, uh, to our board. So. Um, do I have a motion for that? Move please? approval, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I got a second. second. I have a motion by Commissioner Long and a second by Vice Mayor Sofer. Okay. Yeah, go. We'll do a we'll do a roll call, please. Mayor Bujalski. Aye. Off a minute. Yeah. Was that a yes, Mayor Bujalski? Sorry. Aye. Yes. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Vice Mayor Sofer. Aye. Vice Mayor Albritton. Aye. Mayor Kennedy. Yes. Council Member Rice. Yes. Commissioner Welch. Yes. Council Member Gabbard. Yes. Commissioner Seal. Yes. Mayor Bradbury. Aye. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Eggers? Aye. And that carries unanimously. I'm going to start writing them down as yeses versus ayes and really keep track of how you guys go with that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Some people change during the meeting and that that, that really bothers <laughs> me. But I'm, gl I'm glad that most of the mayors use aye. Um, anyway, um, 
a uh, wit, I, you know, again, I just, I, again, Robert's I rules. Say, yes. Uh, wanted to say thank you. And, um, and just wondered if you had any comments that you'd like to make. Uh, no, I think I made them earlier, but I really do appreciate the the kind words and uh, support that you've given me. Um, you know, this is um, this is not an easy job, but it's um, it's a it's a job I love. And um, I, like I said, I couldn't ask for a better team. I couldn't ask for a better board. And um, you know, so many of our partners are just excellent to work with, uh, especially our relationship with FDOT right now. And uh, certainly the county and many of the cities, we, we, you know, it's, it, I think we're very cohesive and at a staff level as well as with the elected officials. So uh, yeah. thank you all uh, and another year, let's, let's get after it. Yeah, and what, uh, yeah, those, those relationships, uh, those good relationships that I'm we just have. Trying to get, with our I'm trying to get the habit of giving. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, was, I'll, we took care of it, Commissioner. It was somebody that just was speaking outside okay. of the realm of this meeting. Okay. But I was just going to say that the, the the good relationships that you have with the region and our partners, and it it, it doesn't just happen. Um, it, it takes a lot of personal work, and um, so I just again wanted to thank you for that. And I know you you work tirelessly for that, but you're just it's just in your heart and in your passion to do the job right. So again, thank you. And we'll and right with that, we'll move into the director's report. Wit, go ahead. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to do a couple things. I'm gonna do a little deeper dive on the spotlight update this uh, month. Uh, and there's a, a little longer summary. I'm gonna start with the Gateway Master Plan. Uh, just so you all know, um, that was a, a joint funded effort for uh, about a 30 square mile area of our county. And we received funding from each of the local governments in that area, we put in a share, an equal share of money and the Department of Transportation really stepped up and matched the money that we put in and did more. Uh, we are now at a point where we've uh, completed the plan. We are currently addressing some of the comments that we received on the plan from the local governments and we should have that done shortly. Uh, but the, the real key to any planning effort is to ensure that there's a commitment to implementation. And nobody wants a plan just to sit on the shelf to say, we checked the box and did it. Uh, and Gateway is so critical to our economic future because much of the Gateway area is in the coastal high hazard area. Uh, much of the Gateway area is uh, automobile centric and very undervalued uh, development. And it's an opportunity for us to create uh, more of a linkage between jobs, housing, uh, and, and destinations. So, uh, what we've done is we've put together a memorandum of understanding uh, with the able help of our attorney, uh, Chelsea Hardy and uh, Christina Mendoza and many other members of our staff. And we uh, first met with the planning directors uh, of all those local governments and got their input on the uh, proposal to do a memorandum of, a, of understanding. And uh, we are now um, refining that memorandum of understanding. We've about got it settled. Uh, based on the comments we've received back from everybody, and we'll be making the rounds to the local governments, Largo, Pinellas Park, St. Petersburg, uh, Pinellas County, and Pinellas Park over the next several months to present the Memorandum of Understanding. And what it does is it organizes uh, a commitment to implementation around several guiding principles of the plan. And uh, we're gonna leave it up to the local governments to demonstrate how they are working to implement the Gateway Master Plan on their own terms. We're not dictating, but we're asking them to come forward and show for these guiding principles, what are you doing? What are you working on? And the language in there, we started out a little more prescriptive and now it's a little more, um, uh, you know, uh, allowing flexibility of, of the local governments. And I think that's the way to go. Um, so, what we want to do is meet quarterly with the staff to start. And if we don't need to meet that often, we'll back off. Uh, but to convene the staff, uh, at least at, at key staff level, maybe at executive level, to uh, tell us what they're working on and has things in there like when you're uh, amending your comprehensive plan, when you're changing your land development codes, when you're developing your capital improvement programs, consider the recommendations of the Gateway Master Plan. 
And uh, what we also want to do is about every two years is bring together the elected officials in Pinellas County, not just you all, but uh, all of them that are affected uh, by countywide issues, which is 25 local governance, mm -hmm. and have the Gateway Master Plan be a standing item when we get together on these regional significantly important topics. So whether it's housing affordability, transportation, or resilience, just to name a few of these big topic items, uh, we want the Gateway to be a standing item where we could report out and um, kind of keep people's feet to the fire a little bit on, hey, don't forget about implementing the things that you've committed to. One thing about the MOU is that we are asking the governing bodies of the local governments to adopt the MOU. And uh, it's for a period of 10 years, unless we choose to extend it. And any local government can opt out. Uh, you have a copy in your packet, so you may be looking at it. Uh, but if a government opts out, then we ask that the governing body be the one to take action on that, uh, rather than doing it at the administrative level. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased with where we are. I think it's a good, solid uh, framework for an ongoing um, commitment to working on the gateway area. And I'll see if anybody has any questions about that first before I move on. Any questions for Whit? Okay, Whit, go ahead. Hey, uh, and then enhancing beach access. I just wanted to give you two quick updates. Uh, one is we've been working with the town of Indian Shores and the Department of Transportation for about a year or so now, about a year and a half um, on a drainage and sidewalk project in Indian Shores. And um, we have a meeting scheduled on June 16th with the um, um, council, I believe, to uh, determine how they wanna go forward on this. Um, the issue is that the sidewalk project uh, is not a complete fix of the issues out there. And uh, doing so, um, even the partial fix will extend the drainage project by about 300 days. And uh, the mayor and some of the other um, people in the town want to have they want to hit a home run here. They really want to do it right. And everybody acknowledges that the drainage improvement is a partial fix. The sidewalks are going to be a partial fix. Uh, but the money is in hand. It's about $12 million in hand. And the town had an estimate from years ago that was about $15 million to do a more complete fix. I'm not sure if that estimate is accurate. But money in the hand uh, is one issue versus potential money in the bush. And um, so we're going to have a conversation about that, and we're hopeful that uh, the town will move forward with the project as is to get some sidewalks built now and to go with the drainage project because the Department of Transportation has really been over backwards to accommodate the town uh, to integrate a sidewalk project into a drainage project that was already let, and that almost never happens. Uh, but the town's going to uh, make their best decision based on the feedback they're getting from their community and their business owners. One of the challenges out there is that a lot of development has encroached in the right of way. So um, that's whether it's outdoor seating or fences or structures being built, and that's happened over decades. So there's no real easy fix out there, but I hope to have a, a good update for you in July. Uh, the next item is a waterborne transportation committee subcommittee you may remember we were going to get that started in march and then all this covid 19 happened so i would like to suggest if the board is good with that to um, um, renew the subcommittee's work uh, beginning in september uh, since we are taking a break in august and we've got a little while to get our feet settled and maybe see how the economy is recovering and and all that, but I'd like to get started on that subcommittee in September if that's good for the board. Any questions there? I'm okay with that. Okay. I'll take uh, that as a thumbs up on that direction. Um, the last item I mentioned earlier about US-19, about having the workshop on that quarter uh, in January, February, so I won't belabor that. There is just a lot going on in 19, and I think we need to kind of come to some conclusions uh, in the early part of 21 about how we want to proceed, particularly for those northern interchanges, um, and, and then go forward after that with a, with a clear vision. The uh, other issue I wanted to bring up is that we asked the Department of Transportation to 
do a bit of re-examination of the design that's underway for the segment between um, State Road 580 Main Street and County Road 95, which is just north of Curlew Road. Uh, there is a pedestrian underpass that is planned and the department is following this board's direction, which is to integrate pedestrian crossings, either an underpass or an overpass, every quarter mile. In this section, they can't accommodate it every quarter mile, so they're looking at every half mile. And the uh, location that they picked was about 450 feet south of Republic Drive, which is currently a full intersection. But Republic Drive will no longer be a full intersection with the design. It'll be a right in, right out uh, in both directions to access the frontage roads. So we need some kind of crossing in that location. And then there's a, a median U-turn a little further north at Northside Drive. The department, uh, in response to some concerns expressed by adjacent businesses in that area over a loss of visibility and nobody's walking out there today, why do we need to build an underpass? Um, the department has come back with a two-page memo explaining their rationale and uh, some of the constraints out there. And they've also done some really nifty animations of the, of the design concept uh, as it's being designed that shows what that visibility would be. So I'm gonna be setting up a meeting with those business owners in the next couple of weeks, I hope, um, to show them uh, and, and have them ask questions of the department and just have a little more feedback now that they've put those animations and explained why the underpass is where it is and some of the constraints about moving it north a little bit or, um, or, or integrating it into the north side drive turnaround. Uh, where there, by the way, there will be an overpass up that way anyway. So I think we're down to either doing away with any kind of crossing for that half mile, which is contrary to the board's direction, uh, or convincing the business owners that it's a good strategy. Um, and we'll sit down with them and hear their concerns. And then if necessary, uh, we'll bring this back to the board in July. And um, I'll see if anybody has any questions about that. I just really wanted to say thank you for doing that. That you know, and FDOT for for stopping a little bit and kind of looking at the request. I think that it, you know, for a lay person like myself, it seems oh, you ought to just be able to move it, and you know, that's easier said than done. And they took a lot of time to kind of look at it carefully. Uh, I think it'll probably help the business owners at least understand what's going on, and perhaps the visibility issue isn't is what they they may think it is and but i think that'll be a good conversation that you're going to have and i think it's really important that we keep listening to our businesses as we make these changes going up 19 but um you know like you said earlier we're going to have that conversation about us 19 and that's a it's an important one to have and we got to get moving on some of these projects and directions so looking forward to that anybody else that would like to uh, any questions or comments or what Anything else, Whit? Uh, yeah, I just wanna to quickly touch on our next TMA leadership group meeting. This is the transportation management area, which is Pasco, Pinellas and Hillsborough MPOs. We're meeting on July 10th uh, at Hillsborough Community College. It'll be an in-person meeting uh, that's in Plant City. Um, and a couple of things on the agenda, we will be uh, asking the TMA leadership group to recommend approval of the transportation regional uh, incentive program priorities. Uh, which we do every year. Uh, those are the uh, uh, projects that are grant funded. They have to have a 50% match, but that's a state program. And then uh, multi-use trail program priorities. We'll also be asking them to uh, recommend approval of those. Significantly though, Commissioner Seal mentioned uh, about the regional rapid transit project that TBARDA is doing as well as they're uh, poised to adopt Envision 2030, which is a regional transit development plan at the June meeting. Uh, that uh, financial uh, plan for Envision 2030 caused some initial consternation uh, among the existing transit agencies, just because there was a little bit of confusion about what they were looking at in some of those financial scenarios. Uh, TBARDA is, I, I believe, going to adopt a status quo plan, so no change in revenue assumptions. But currently, TBARDA is funded largely through legislative earmarks. And at some point, that probably won't continue. Um, 
So we do need to look for a stable funding source for TBARDA. We need to uh, also have a discussion about how do we find the resources that we need for both regional transportation that TBARDA is responsible for and uh, elevate uh, the operations of our local transit providers, which have been financially starved for a long, long time. And I think that's a really important conversation. Uh, I don't think there's consensus uh, across the region on how we go forward with some of these proposals, but uh, the TMA is the forum where we can begin to hash some of that out. So we do have that item on the agenda. Uh, David Green of TBARDA and I will be facilitating that conversation. We don't have a lot of time at this meeting, so it will probably be an introduction and we'll need to build on that in subsequent meetings of the TMA and other partners. Um, and I know TBARDA has been looking at kind of a blue ribbon committee at the regional level to really address our, our funding challenges at the regional level vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis transit and some of these innovative concepts that Commissioner Seal mentioned. And then uh, the last item that I wanna go back and mention to you is um, just the regional transit coordination. So we have been working with PSTA, City of St. Petersburg, uh, and TBARDA's consultant on the Regional Rapid Transit Project in the Central Avenue BRT to ensure that there's really good coordination for the stations that are planned in the downtown St. Petersburg area at the TROP site and in the downtown area so that uh, both TBARDA and PSTA can use those stations effectively and efficiently. And that's all part of our downtown master plan that Sarah Caper is managing. So um, not a whole lot to say other than just rest assured that there's a lot of coordination going on and we wanna make sure we get it all right. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Witt. Um, appreciate that information, that report. Um, we move on to the informational items, which really you, there's a list of eight or nine things. It's pretty standard. I ask you to continue to always look at the fatalities map and just remember why we're here to try to make this our streets a little bit safer. I think that brings it home every time. So uh, it's always good to kind of just get a sense and a feel for what's going on. And I appreciate FBOT's report as well as our own uh, fatality map. Um, the only other thing I'd mention is under committee vacancies, uh, St. Pete has a CAC opening. Um, and then we, uh, the LCB has a three openings for a TD rider, a public education rep, and a children at risk rep. So we have three, uh, three folks, three openings on the LCB. So if we could uh, uh, kind of look at some um, possibilities there, that would be great. And finally, I would say that um, we had all of that discussion and our staff's done a great job with these meetings, uh, these virtual meetings. We will be meeting in person in July. Uh, I believe it's July 8th. And um, we will be meeting at the Magnolia Room. It's down off of Ulmerton Road on the west end of Ulmerton Road. Um, and uh, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be down there. It's a much larger room. Uh, we'll be able to accommodate board there and kind of a just, you know, keeping our safe distances and be able to accommodate people in the audience. It's just the board here, the boardroom here is just too small, but that's where we'll be, we'll be doing. We'll make sure everybody knows where we're meeting and how to get there and all of that. But uh, uh, again, just a, a thank you to our staff for pulling all of this together um, the last couple of months, uh, been, a, been a big help. So um, with that, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else on the board have anything that they'd like to bring up before we adjourn? I just, Anything from thank you. I just want to say thank you to Tina. Uh, Tina, you really did a great job with these virtual meetings over the last couple of months. That's uh, what I was saying, yes. It's, it's been Sarah predominantly. I, I really, it's been her and I together and we're still working. We have a plan tomorrow to work with communications uh, beginning in July. Uh, the BCC as well as our meetings are going to be a hybrid version of a meeting. So the public will still be participating in Zoom. And Sarah and I have been invited to work with the communications team tomorrow to begin those test runs. So we'll be ready for you all in July. Thanks, Sarah. And awesome. you guys have uh, should be able to go out to a dude ranch this summer and work, you know, <laughs> herding all of us around. So. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Thank you for that. Anybody? Anybody else? Okay. Well, bye, thank everybody. you, staff. And uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say bye, everybody. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you soon, guys. Take, Take care. care. Be safe. Bye.